today we are <clears throat> today we are debating flat earth and we are starting right now Ladies and gentlemen, thrilled to have you here for this epic debate as we are going toe-to-toe -to -toe today. Nathan Thompson and Fight the Flat Earth are sparring on this most important subject. And want to say, if it's your first time here, consider hitting that subscribe button as we are very excited for a lot of upcoming debates as well. So, for example, Wotan will be back next weekend. You'll see that pictured at the bottom right of your screen. We are pumped for that as well. And very excited, want to let you know, we are a nonpartisan channel. So we try to be as neutral as possible, whether you be Christian, atheist, flat earth, globe earth, Democrat, Republican, you name it, we want you to feel welcome. And with that, want to let you know the format before we get rolling today. So the format for today's debate is 12-minute openings to present arguments, followed by open discussion for about 60 minutes, and then 30 minutes of Q&A. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, Fight the Flat Earth has volunteered to go first. But before we do start the timer for him, I want to let you know both his link and Nathan's link I've put in the description. So if you're listening and you're like, hmm, I want more. Well, you can get more. I highly encourage you. Click on those links. They're waiting for you just down in that description box. So very excited, folks. Fight the Flat Earth. Glad to have you here. Nathan Thompson, glad to have you here. Gentlemen, thanks so much for being with us tonight. Thank you for uh, having me back on the channel again, James. Always a pleasure. Happy to be here. Thanks, James. You're awesome. You know, I'm a big supporter. Guys, if you're listening and you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do. I've been listening long enough to where I'm a Patreon. So, uh, big fan of the channel. I love what you do, James. Thanks. I appreciate that encouragement. And we are stoked as we are going to get the timer started for Fight. And so I have got 12 minutes. You don't have to use all of it. So if either of you feel like uh, you're... No, you just got my video to play for that 12 minutes. You betcha. So I will switch it over for that opening statement from Fight the Flat Earth. He has sent me a video beforehand. I have not watched this. So completely spontaneous. You never it's know something what special. <laughs> you never know what you're going to get. So we are flipping it over right now, folks, to Fight the Flat Earth's opening statement. We're living on a disc, floating through space, with a tiny sun. Are you getting it so Nathan can see it on the screen? Hey, I'm FTFE from the channel That's... that shoves stupidity feet first into a wood chipper. Uh... Alright guys, I can watch on the YouTube phone. On the YouTube phone. Yeah, yeah, I'm on YouTube on my phone, don't worry, I got it. One, two, three. One, two, three. Oh, it's no use. From my evidence, I'm going to... Hold on two secs. Hello? Yes, yes NASA, I've got the script for the debate. I'm actually recording my opening argument right now. Yeah, I know you already said that if I do well in the debate and stick to the official script, then you'll give me a massive bonus in my shield check this month. I mean, it's all right. It's only Nathan Thompson. No, I said you didn't need to do any research. What's that? You found a home video of him as a child. Oh, let's have a look. Oh, I go for a road, Daddy. Oh, go get the... Oh, yeah, go for a road, Daddy. Go for a road, Daddy. Baby, I dropped him again. Drop little Nathan. Damn it, that's the tenth time this week you dropped baby Nathan on his head. Hey, little guy. Oh shit, he's face down in lead paint. He's making a mess. Anyway, with all the schools closing, Nathan must have loads of spare time, so I'd, I'd better go. Yes, NASA, I love you too. I'll just edit that part out. Where was I? Oh yeah. For my evidence, I'm going to show 10 things that are so impossible right, on a flat stationary boring. earth, but explained perfectly right, on the globe list. that is rotating. Let me just check my script. Okay. Number 10. No flat earther has ever given a suitable answer for this because the stars are a major issue for flat earthers. But the biggest problem is Polaris, which can only be seen from the Northern Hemisphere and actually disappears from view behind the horizon as you go south of the equator. 
The position of Polaris in the sky actually helped sailors navigate for centuries using a sextant, as at the poles, the North Star is directly overhead, and for every degree in latitude you move towards the equator, the degree between the horizon and Polaris reduces. This is impossible on a flat and stationary Earth, as you'd be able to see the North Star at all times, and it can't be flirtspective or any crap like that, because that would not explain how observers here and here see the same stars, yet can't see the star here. Number nine. Talking about the stars, it's not just the position of them that causes a problem for flurfs, but also their motion. Because there is simply no way that on a flat stationary Earth you could have stars that in the northern hemisphere rotate counterclockwise and in the southern hemisphere rotate clockwise. Because the Earth is rotating, the sky appears to rotate. Viewed from above the North Pole, the Earth is rotating counterclockwise. And for an observer on Earth, objects move from east to west. And this is true for both northern and southern hemispheres. So more accurately put, when looking north, objects in the sky move counterclockwise. And when looking south, they move clockwise. Perfectly explained by us sane people, no explanation on Pancake World. Number eight. Let's talk about our nearest star, the Sun, because that's also a major problem for flat earthers. Um, Vince, apparently they prefer the word retard. Hey, Oh, how very quaint. Because throughout the entire day, the angular size of the Sun never changes. Due to the fact that the Sun is 93 million miles away and much bigger than the Earth, the apparent size of the Sun in the sky stays the same all day. This is impossible on a flat Earth that has a small and local sun. If that was the case, then the sun would grow in size as the day progresses and the sun gets closer, and then shrink in size as the sun went off on its cosmic merry-go-round. Thanks to many observations of the sun with solar filters, we know that the angular size of the sun stays the same, and it's also the same for the moon. Number seven. Talking about the sun, sunsets are a problem because only on a globe that is rotating away from the sun is this photograph possible. Unless it is Flat Earth's contention that the sun physically drops below the height of that mountain, then there is no way a small and local sun could cast a shadow on the underside of those clouds. Impossible on a Flat Earth, no problem for the heliocentric model. Number six. Let's go back to the moon for a second. The moon does a few things that are impossible on a flat Earth. Cause the tides, reflect sunlight, get landed on by humans, but it's the lunar eclipse that is the biggest issue for a flat Earth. In the heliocentric model, as the Earth matches the ecliptic plane of the sun and moon, it blocks out the reflective light from our largest satellite. I wonder what a lunar eclipse would look like on a flat Earth. Number five. Flat earthers always say, show me the curve, show me the curve, like a demented parrot. NASA lies. Earth is flat. Randy NASA lies. Flat. So here it is. In Miles Davis photos from Terpin Law in Fife, Scotland, you can see things that are impossible on a flat earth. Looking towards Edinburgh, we see mountains that are 500 metres above sea level, below an eye level of 210 metres, which both his camera and the tops of these bridge towers are. That would look something like this in a orthographic view. But even better is when Miles turns around 180 degrees and sees this, another reference point of 210 meters, and the mountains in the background that have an elevation above sea level of a thousand meters that also fall below that eye line. Number four. So we definitely have a curve, but what about rotation? Well, we can measure it. Bob? If the Earth is spinning at one rotation every 24 hours, that means that every hour it has to turn 15 degrees. And if the gyroscope is mounted anywhere on Earth, it's going to drift. In today's 21st century navigation systems, they're using what's called a ring laser gyroscope. It is extremely precise. If we could simply get one of these ring laser gyroscopes, we would be able to prove once and for all that there is no rotation to the Earth. One of the people in the community actually purchased one for $20,000. But what we found is, is when we turned on that gyroscope, we found that we were picking up a drift. A 
15 degree per hour drift. There is no explanation on a flat stationary earth for why an interferometric fiber optic gyro would pick up a 15 degree per hour drift in three axes. It can't be any kind of electromagnetic or electrostatic charge from the heaven energies as light does not have a charge and is therefore unaffected by such things. Not that there is any such thing as heaven energies. Number three. And if we are rotating, as confirmed by good old Bobby, thanks Bob, then there are certain effects that we should get. For instance, the Coriolis force, an apparent force caused by going from one area on the earth with an angular velocity to another with less or more angular velocity, and is all about the conservation of momentum. It's literally what causes hurricanes. And in a World War I naval battle between the English and the Germans near the Falkland Islands off Argentina, the English battle cruisers Invincible and Inflexible engaged two German warships at a range of nearly 10 miles. The English forgot to reverse the direction of their Coriolis correction. Their tables had been calculated for northern hemisphere projectiles. So they missed their targets by even more than if no correction had been applied. They ultimately won the battle against the Germans with about 60 direct hits, but it was not before over a thousand missile shells had fallen into the ocean. There's also the fact that current military manuals for artillery talk about correcting for the Earth's spin. Number two. And the Coriolis force causes other things, like the drift of a pendulum. As a pendulum swings, the swinging part will be above one area of angular velocity at one end of the swing, and another when at the other end of the swing. Because of the law of conservation of momentum, this will induce a drift into the pendulum swing depending on the latitude. The gentleman physicist used this effect to pretty accurately figure out his latitude on Earth to within 1.5 degrees. No reason that you should be able to do that on a flat stationary imaginary world. Number one. Another consequence of the Earth rotating is the Yachtvoss effect. As the Earth is spinning, that means we have a centrifugal acceleration acting on us. At the equator, where the angular velocity is the highest, it's about 0.03% of the gravitational acceleration, making us weigh about 0.5% more than at the poles. The Yachtvoss effect says that if we add to this centrifugal acceleration, then we could decrease our weight even more. In the early 1900s, they tested this on ships in the Pacific, Atlantic, and Indian Oceans, and more recently, Wolfie 6020 tested it on a plane traveling east to west and a plane traveling west to east and got results consistent with the predictions of our spinning ball satanic sun-worshipping globe cult. I mean, the heliocentric model. So with so much evidence for the Earth being a globe and rotating and absolutely none whatsoever for it being flat and stationary, how do people even become flat earthers? Hey, baby, oh, Nathan, you got this. You got this, man. Keep bouncing. Go, 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 Nathan. Go, Nathan. Go, Nathan. Go, Nathan. Go, Nathan. Nathan, just like your practice. It's okay if it drops. It's okay. You just keep going, man. You just keep going. Hey, buddy. I gotta tell you something, man. You ever hear that the earth is flat? Really? Really? Ah. I got I gotta tell everybody. Yeah, no, I just... <laughs> the Earth is flat! The Earth is flat! Dude, I was fucking flat! kidding! Come back! Yeah. He doesn't do something stupid. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks so much. That was Fight the Flat Earth's opening statement. We will now kick it over to Nathan Thompson for his opening statement as well. Thanks so much. The floor is all yours, Nathan. James, can you just make sure I'm uh, sharing my screen properly? I'm gonna go to Keynote here on the Zoom meeting and click Share. I just wanna make sure you guys can see that. You bet, sure can. And then how about when I hit play? It's at full screen. Excellent. So guys, my name is Nathan Thompson. I run the official flat earth and globe discussion. We've got 
uh, about 130,000 members in there. We don't allow cursing or insults. And I realize some of the information I'm going to talk about may seem a little disturbing, but the truth is incontrovertible. Malice may attack it. Ignorance may try and deride it. But in the end, there it is. And so the most dangerous man to any government is the man who is able to think for himself without regard to the prevailing superstitions and taboos. So if you know that the earth is flat, then you are deadly dangerous. You are the very type of person who's broken free from the conditioning and do not buy hook, line, and sinker to the lies that the public education and the mass fake mainstream media are spreading. Uh, the biblical account of creation, the reality that we live in, anyone can test, and we'll get to all the science in a minute, is critical because through God's creation, he reveals his glory and his handiwork. Psalm 19.1 says, the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament shows his handiwork. So I'm not asking you guys to believe anything you're about to see here, but at least hear me out uh, before you do. And also, if you're a Christian, search the scriptures. If you're not a Christian, do your own research and experiments. And if you're a Christian, also do your own research and experiments. Because in the Bible, it says, test all things and hold fast to that which is true. I have three arguments today. Uh, they deal with fluid statics, fluid dynamics, and the second law of thermodynamics. I don't have any fancy cartoons or gory images. I'm not here to make fun of fight the flat earth. Um, I understand where he's coming from. I was a glober for 30 years. I understand it's a lot of indoctrination that people need to get over when they realize that the earth is flat. And then also with that comes a lot of criticism because uh, not everyone that you know is gonna accept that the earth is flat right away, but over time, uh, both my brothers are now flat earthers. I've been getting text messages from my brother's friends on Instagram and, and direct messages saying, hey, your brother turned me into a flat earther, but I have questions about uh, seasons or, or how does GPS work? So guys, if there's anything under the sun that we don't talk about tonight in the presentation, I want you to super chat that to James and I will make sure I cover that in the question and answer portion at the end of the show. I'm happy to stay here as long as that takes. Okay, so the three arguments. First, we're going to start with, does the earth spin? Now, Craig will allege that there is some type of Coriolis force. So I want to look at the two ways a spinning earth could affect our atmosphere. First, would it would cause the atmosphere to rotate as a cohesive, synchronized body. It's not what Craig says. Craig says there would be a Coriolis effect, or, or it would cause it like a giant blender. The uh, atmosphere would move separately from the rotating Earth. It's problems with both of these. First, let's look at the atmosphere moving as one cohesive body. So that would mean that the atmosphere increases in velocity the higher you go up in altitude the higher levels would have to travel faster to keep with the surface air, guys. What natural force could do this? Not only is there no sideways pulling force that could increase air in velocity just to make it maintain the speed of the presupposed rotating Earth going 1,000 miles an hour, um, but uh, we also observe jet streams. 200 300 miles an hour eastward and westward so that would mean that the jet streams would be outpacing the rotation of the earth they'd actually be going faster than the rotation of the earth and including that increase in velocity that they would be experiencing too because they are farther outward from the center of the earth so a column of air will not move as one cohesive body as a result of moving your hand back and forth through the air or as a result of the Earth spinning a thousand miles an hour. That's not what happens. That's not how fluid dynamics work. And good thing that's not Craig's argument. Craig's argument was the atmospheric blender. 
what would really happen to the atmosphere if the Earth spun. Now, you'll witness here on the left, if you blend up those paints, the majority of this velocity is in the center near where the paint is being spun by the instrument. But out towards the outer layers, it's not being dragged. It's not all being pulled. So if Earth were a spinning ball, this is an indisputable law of fluid dynamics. The Earth would have what's called a Coriolis force. The problem is we do not observe a Coriolis force because the Earth does not rotate under anything. Doesn't rotate under hot air balloons, airplanes, drones, insects, balls you throw in the air, volcano smoke, nothing. So if the Earth were rotating 1,040 miles an hour, they would account for it in airplane flight. Now, this is just a 29 mile per hour crosswind, and the airplane can't even land. So what makes people think that it's moving 1,040 miles per hour other than what we've been told? And I, I do want to bring up the ring laser gyroscope. I thought it was interesting that the cartoon globe that they showed in the background is it, the cartoon, an obvious cartoon. Um, if you Google pictures of the South Pole from space, those are all cartoons. And I actually want to show some of those later. I haven't pulled up, but... Uh, pictures of satellites from space. Those are all cartoons. Pictures of the solar system in space. Those are all cartoons. Now, smoke on a moving surface, reality, uh, it would have a drag. It would not go straight up and down like smoke on a stationary surface behaving like this. Now, see how I'm using real pictures real observable evidence that anyone can see themselves. So, and sometimes there's no wind at all outside. So to assume that the earth is spinning 1,040 miles an hour, if you strap a rocket to the back of this right here, what's gonna happen to the hot air balloons, the people, the buildings, the airplanes, and the mountains? They're all, of course, gonna go flying off because that's how fluid dynamics work. And so this is really simple. The cartoon spinning ball is fairy tale SpongeBob imagination land. It's not science. It's not supported with reality. Okay, now this is just 100 miles an hour. I don't think life as we know it, ladies and gentlemen, would even be possible on a spinning globe. And why do people think that 1,040 miles an hour just have no impact? At five miles an hour, you can feel it. At 60 miles an hour, people lose their lunch and throw up. But 1,040 miles an hour is just a walk in the park. Now, water on a spinning ball behaves like this on the left. Mud flinging off a spinning tire behaves like this on the right. So what would the oceans do on a 1,040 mile per hour rotating Earth? Now, my second argument I want to bring up is could the atmosphere even exist without a physical barrier or what God calls the firmament or what the Beatles called the yellow submarine or what SpongeBob calls the pineapple under the sea, okay? Or NASA calls them the Van Allen belts. Ezekiel 1 calls them the wheels in the sky moving to and fro containing the spirits so uh, basically what i'm saying is we live under some type of container and i would say that the vacuum of space could not exist next to earth's pressurized atmosphere without a container now nasa will tell you they go to heavens in a rocket i'll tell you don't believe them they're lying and stealing 52 million dollars a day and lying to all the kids in the education system bible says it would be better if a millstone was hung around your neck and you jump in a lake, then you mislead children. Hope you take note of that, fight the flat earth. So this argument right here, it's real simple, guys. It's like asking, can a tire rim have air pressure around it without a tire while in a vacuum? Of course not. It would have to 
the, the, the tire rim would have to have a tire around it to have gas pressure. And gravity can't hold the atmosphere to Earth when a stronger force is pulling on it from the outside. Third, is the Earth a globe? Third argument I want to bring up. Now, Earth, science, mainstream science will tell you the Earth is a globe 24,901 miles in diameter, or sorry, um, the radius will be 3,959 miles. The circumference of Earth is 34,901 miles. This would necessitate a vertical drop tangent to your feet in all directions of approximately 0.666 feet or eight inches per mile squared. We also do not observe this. At 10 miles, we should witness 66.6 feet of Earth curve in all directions. At 100 miles, there should be over a mile of Earth curvature in all directions. We do not observe this. It's a simple law of fluid statics. The Earth is 70% water. Large bodies of water do not curve. Here's a little observation anybody can do for themselves. Go to Chicago. I've done this with Rick Hummer who filmed the Michigan experiment or observation with Rob Skiba. Uh, they basically took a boat from one side of the lake to the other to confirm that this was not a mirage because the news actually said that what you're seeing when you go to the other side of Lake Michigan and view Chicago is a mirage. Now there's no characteristics of a mirage. There's no towering, there's no looming, there's no waviness. I would submit guys that what you're seeing is what you get. The earth is flatter than a pancake. Now, that was just from 39 miles, but there's another famous seconds photo. Left. Excellent, thank you. There's another famous photo Joshua Nowicki took. Um, so I'm just gonna breeze through these real quick. And um, I'll skip a couple slides here. I wanna show Mount Descento in the infrared, because from 123 miles, guys, we should not be seeing all of this mountain. Um, also take a look at specular reflections. Large bodies of water do, do not curve. There's no light diffusion. They are perfect mirrors. And I could go on and on. Loads don't disappear over an apparent horizon because time. the horizon changes day to day. Thank you so much, James, for the time. Guys, subscribe and support the channel. Thank you so much. Thank you, Nathan, for that opening statement as well. We will now jump into the open discussion section. So I'm going to pull you out of full screen, if that's all right, Nathan. And then we will jump back into the discussion boxes. So thanks so much, folks. Very excited for this. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, this could get, could get pretty wild. I don't know. I mean, who knows? So gentlemen, the floor is all yours. I mean, to quote Luke Skywalker, everything you just said is wrong like literally everything your, your entire argument nathan is i don't understand science basically um, i mean I, where, where to where to start um not how fluid dynamics work can you tell me how fluid dynamics work i i don't think you can um the higher wait wait, wait. can we go are... through this point by point craig so you want me to tell you how <clears throat> Fluid dynamics. Uh, I mean, your, 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 claim, your claim is that's not how fluid dynamics work. So can you explain to me exactly how fluid dynamics work and the equations and stuff uh, behind all that? Uh, okay. I'm here to give you evidence that the earth is not a rotating ball. I'm not here to break down equations and show you how it all works. You can do that in your well, you didn't spare, give any evidence. spare time, Craig. So... Uh, your question was fluid dynamics. Now, if the Earth yeah. rotated, there would be what's called a Coriolis effect. We do not observe. Uh, oh, okay. okay, what there is the Coriolis is. effect? Please tell me what the Coriolis effect is, because I don't think you well, know. I appreciate you asking nicely. I will gladly tell you what the Coriolis effect is. Coriolis effect states, and please don't interrupt me, Craig, because I want to keep track. I've done these debates. With I mean, you. if you're if you're wrong, I will say you're wrong and correct you. I just asked you not to interrupt me, so I'm going to go ahead and make a note here. Craig, Ooh, I'm he's making to, a note. Lovely. I'm doing, I'm going to keep track of all the interruptions. Cool. Cool story, bro. Get on with it. You just interrupted me again. Yeah, so cool story, bro. Get on with it. Interruption there. So I'm <laughs> trying to help you, Craig, and I'm trying to cool. teach you that. Cool story, bro. Get on with it. Even 
is SpongeBob Imagination. Cool story, bro. Get on with it. So I'm going to take my science hammer, Craig, and I'm going to beat science into SpongeBob fairy tale global imagination land. You want to get on with it? All right. So if the earth rotated, it would rotate under hot air balloons. That's not what the Coriolis force is. You're wrong. Throw in the air. Okay, I need to educate you on what the Coriolis force is, obviously, because you've no idea. The Coriolis force is not the Earth rotating under things. No one ever said it was. You are simply wrong with that assumption. The Coriolis force is about the law of conservation of momentum. And that is to do with the angular velocity uh, of the Earth at certain latitudes. Now, if you're at the equator, the angular velocity is approximately a thousand miles an hour. And if you were to go north, you would go into an area of lower angular velocity meaning that you would maintain your angular momentum and drift ahead of the rotation. That is nothing to do with the Earth spinning underneath you. That is not what the Coriolis force is. Okay, but you're alleging that the Earth rotates 1,040 miles an hour. No, 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 no. The Earth doesn't rotate 1,040 miles an hour. That is an angular velocity. The Earth rotates at about 15 degrees per hour. Okay, you, don't ro you don't rotate in the miles per hour. But if it's 24,901 miles around and it makes one rotation a day, then that would necessitate it's moving approximately 1,039 miles. Yes, the around. angular velocity is the 1,000 yes. odd miles yes. an hour, not yes. the rotation. The yes. rotation is 15 degrees per hour. Did you? And they are not the same thing. Did you, you understand that, right? That the velocity is 1,039 miles per hour, Craig. Yes. As I have stated many times, the rotation is not 1,030 miles an hour. The angular velocity is 1,030 miles an hour at the equator. Excellent. They are and you different that, things. You said that nobody said Earth rotated under things. Now, are you familiar with who Neil deGrasse Tyson is, Craig? Yes, but I'm not talking about Neil deGrasse Tyson. I know. I'm talking I about the actual description of... Well, let, no, let's get back to what the Coriolis force is. I don't care what Neil deGrasse Tyson I'm, said. This is the debate between me and you. Nobody says earth rotates under things now not only do they teach kids in school that there is a coriolis effect and that earth rotates under things but you if you check neil no, i went to school you didn't that's, that's not what the coriolis force is we're going to go with third let's, like, right. nathan, let, second, nathan let, let me just, tell this one second let's just just let nathan finish this point and i promise yeah. we'll come right back Please, I, I, okay. i'm gonna count the interruptions james yeah but let, let's let's not have the straw mans about nathan tom about uh, neil degrasse tyson nathan because i'm not neil degrasse tyson and I am actually telling you what the Coriolis force is. Neil deGrasse Tyson okay. is a science communicator who says things in a layman's way for people to understand. The Coriolis force, and you need to listen here because this is important, the Coriolis force is not the Earth rotating underneath something. It is the conservation of momentum when moving from one area of angular velocity to another. Okay? Stop saying stupid things. Okay, Craig, so Neil deGrasse Tyson said that Earth rotated under a field goal. So when Craig fight the flat Earth, who cool story, bro. in SpongeBob imagination, fairy tale science, I've got to beat him cool with the science story, bro. into the head. Please stop interrupting me. I'm going to go with four interruptions so far, cool. James. I'm surprised you count that high. So you, I, I can't believe that you would ask me. To tell you, to give you evidence for a flat earth, I'm telling well, you. No, 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 you haven't given evidence for a flat earth. You've given your misunderstanding of what the Coriolis force is. Craig, and I am, I am educating explain. you on what the Coriolis force is. The you Coriolis force is not the earth rotating underneath something. The Coriolis force is the conservation of angular momentum. So we, you will agree that earth doesn't rotate under things? Well, earth rotates. The Coriolis force is not the earth rotating underneath things. Does the okay. Earth rotate underneath things? The Earth rotates, but that is not what the Coriolis force is, Nathan. Craig, does, can you does the Earth does the Earth rotate in um, reference to the cosmic microwave micro background radiation? Yes, it does. Wait, but Craig. the Coriolis force, which is what we are talking about, is not the Earth rotating underneath things. Okay. So you will agree the Earth does not rotate under hot air balloons, airplanes, balls, absolutely air, insects. Excellent. Excellent. So now we're going to go from, there is a Coriolis force guys. And I want to point this out and please Craig, don't interrupt me because I'm keeping track. You're at four interruptions. Uh, I'm, I'm, yeah, lovely. Uh, that's, just, that's if you, if you, yeah, Nathan, you don't ever shut up. Okay. Excellent. If so, you get something wrong, I'm going to tell you. 
Oh, you're going to okay? interrupt me. No, I'm going to tell you when you're wrong, because this isn't a debate. This is me teaching a moron basic physics. Well, that's an insult. So let's, all right, Nathan, Nathan, the evidence, the evidence that you are going to bring up, go ahead, Nathan, we'll give you a shot and then we'll come back to you, uh, fight the flat earth. Yeah, of course. What I was going to say is because Craig believes in SpongeBob, fairy tale, imagination, land, science. Cool story, bro. Another interruption. I'm going to go with six interruptions because I'm keeping track. Oh, wow. He didn't even so, have to take off his socks. Yep. So, Craig, um, if you could just let me finish and then I'll let you speak. Yeah, if you can get on with the point, that would be great. This but you debate. waffle inherently. Okay. So because Craig believes in fairy tale, imagination, SpongeBob science, he'll say things like blah, Earth blah, has a blah. Coriolis effect. But then he will also say things like the atmosphere moves with the earth and the earth doesn't rotate under things. Now, I already went over how if the atmosphere moves with the earth, it would have to increase in velocity. Not only that, but we have jet streams moving 200 and 300 miles an hour east. Sometimes they're moving 200 and 300 miles an hour west, which means it would be outpacing the speed of the earth with this increase in velocity that we don't experience. So Craig will admit that earth does not rotate under things. I'll agree, Craig. I appreciate the concession. It looks like we're getting some okay, science. Hey, right. Are you ready to actually learn something now? Because again, everything you just said was wrong. The atmosphere, planes, insects, they all use the atmosphere to fly. And the Coriolis force is not the Earth rotating underneath things. And that is not me saying the Earth does not rotate, but that is just not what the Coriolis force is. The jet streams and all other weather patterns also rotate with the Earth. You can have a weather pattern where wind will be blowing north, south, east, west, but that entire weather pattern is also rotating with the Earth. You are correct in the, in the assumption that the higher you go in the atmosphere, the angular velocity of that particular part of the atmosphere would be going faster. That's not an issue. But the atmosphere is so minutely off the surface of the Earth that that difference in velocity is barely noticeable. But that's not, you know, it's all moving as one cohesive unit because of billions of years of rotation and friction of 15 degrees per hour. It's a simple, it's all about conservation of momentum and the sum of the forces that are there. You not understanding things is not evidence for the flat earth. None of what you have said so far is evidence for the flat earth. It's just you not understanding what the Coriolis force is. So okay. to clarify, the Coriolis force is not the earth rotating underneath things. The Coriolis force is to do with the conservation of momentum when moving from one area of angular velocity to another. This will, if you are on the equator going north, cause you to drift ahead of the rotation because you maintain a greater angular velocity. However, all the atmosphere is rotating with the Earth, and that's nothing to do with the Coriolis force. The Coriolis force, however, can help in the formation of hurricanes and things like that, and also explains why the hurricanes get ripped apart if they cross the equator. All right, next. So oh, that was great. Um, I, Craig conceded that the Earth does not rotate under objects. I conceded nothing. Concession. So how about the atmosphere needing a container, Craig? Could you? Yeah, it, it has a container. Could you? It has a container. So you're yeah. a dome, you're a dome Earther now. No, it has a container. It's called energy. So there is a gravitational acceleration downwards. This is undisputable. And Wait. that gravitational acceleration downwards requires energy to escape that energy that it requires to escape the atmosphere, the, the, the gravitational acceleration is the barrier that is there. I can demonstrate to you right now a video of a gas pressure sitting right next to a vacuum with no physical barrier between them. I know you've seen it before, but do you want to see it again? Uh, could you please for your audience, because I want this to be very clear because, uh, ver and please don't interrupt me, Craig. You asked me if I want to see it. I'm going to explain, yes, I do want to see it. Cool, Craig believes in SpongeBob fairy tale imagination cool. land. Cool, 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 I'm, cool, 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 I'm cool. in the middle of talking, Craig. I'm gonna. Yeah, you're you're banging that. SpongeBob with a hammer. That's. One, I'm just gonna ignore you when two, you do that. Three, four, five, Can six. You count this high, guys. Seven to ten. Interruptions. 
I wonder so if I get to 11, he has to take off his uh, socks and shoes. Seven. So I know you want me to take my clothes off, Craig, but I won't be doing that on air for James and his sister. Oh, you do it plenty all the <laughs> yeah, time anyway. you not do it for anybody. <laughs> so it's all and good. Too. So can I speak now, Craig, uninterrupted? Um, I mean, as long as you don't waffle on for too long, yeah, sure. Uh, how long are you going to give me, Craig? Uh, well, just carry on. If you get something wrong, I'll let you know. No, 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 no. I want to know how long you're going to give me without interrupting me for the it's eighth maths. time. It's maths. You wouldn't get it. I'm sorry? It's maths. You wouldn't get it. Now, I'm obviously counting and keeping track, so I can count. Is that I mean, I'm, I'm surprised. You must have a chart or something with you. That's another insult. We're going to go with number four insults. Excellent, Craig. I really appreciate it. Um, no worries, Nathan. This is all you, you lost. Hey, hey, you lost all ah. semblance of any kind of respect being given to you when you decided to harass school children. Now we're so, going to go with another. Can't stay on topic. We're going to go with another insult. It has nothing to oh, do. Oh no, with no. You're, you're talking about level. about what? Why I'm acting like this? Cool. Now uh, you you were saying about the uh, the fact that you need a physical container to keep a gas pressure. You were saying. Carry on. Yes, of course. So it's the second law of thermodynamics. It's what does the second law of thermodynamics say? That's another enter another interruption. We're going to go with eight on the board. Thank you very much, Craig. I know it's very tough to listen to me beat science into what, your- No, no. You, you just said it's the second law of thermodynamics. Can you please describe the second law of thermodynamics? Ninth interruption. Very, very excellent. Can, can you? Yes, you, I can. Can I, can I be uninterrupted? Yep. Go on, go on then. I, I'll, I'll give you a couple of minutes to be wrong and then I'll correct you. Carry on. I don't need a couple of minutes to explain the second law of thermodynamics. I appreciate you giving me two or three minutes. I'm going to run with it. So because Craig believes in SpongeBob fairy tale imagination science, I've got to beat him over the head with the science hammer for about four or five minutes now, telling him that high pressure systems move towards low pressure systems. So if you have your hand and you put it on a hot stove, you will get burned. If you have a pressurized atmosphere and you put it in a vacuum, it will disperse Ooh. rapidly. So now Craig likes to talk about gravitational accelerations downward and everything, but if you put gas into a vacuum, it disperses in all directions, not down. So oh, I'm, I'm still waiting for you to tell me what the second law of thermodynamics is. I thought you were going to do that. That's the 10th interruption. I explained very thoroughly the second law of thermodynamics is no, you, you how didn't. high pressure systems move towards low pressure systems, Craig. And oh, then I gave okay. evidence. That's, that's that. not the second law of thermodynamics, Nathan. I'm go with an interruption there because I'm still but, talking. But you said the second law of thermodynamics, but then what you said wasn't the second law of thermodynamics. This is why I stopped talking to Craig a very long time ago. And I, as a so favor, you asked do, me to come do you on the know what the second law of thermodynamics is? is or? Okay, so let's, I'm going to have to ask you to step in. I think you asked me as a favor to come on your channel. I've counted 10 interruptions already, and I won't do another 10. I'll leave. What we'll do is let's run away, switch lovely. into a maybe a few minutes. I think this is what we did with Sargon and uh, Vosh where we will give uh, maybe a few minutes on each side and just flip back and forth. So, uh, Nathan, if you do want to go uh, fight the flat earth, if you can do us a favor, we'll let Nathan go for a yeah, few yeah, minutes. James. And I promise we'll come right back to you. And same thing where Nathan won't be able to interrupt you. All right. Just make sure he sticks to the second law of thermodynamics for now so we can discuss that one point. Excellent. So thank you so much, James, for moderating that. So the second law of thermodynamics is entropy, ladies and gentlemen. High pressure systems move towards low. So if you have an above a hot stove and you touch the hot stove, the heat will transfer from the hot stove into your rapidly. It's high pressure moving towards low pressure. When your house is heated and you open the door to your house, you're not you're not uh, letting the cold in. You're letting the heat out. The high pressure system, uh, the heat from your house is going out and that's being replaced by a lack of a high pressure system, a lack of heat. So you experience cold. And now you can't have atmosphere around the earth without a container. My example of this was a tire. You could not have pressure around a tire rim without a tire. Now I'll just ask Craig one simple question and end on this. Craig, do you think you could have gas pressure around a tire rim without a tire? Uh, 
are, are you asking me specifically if you can have gas pressure next to a low pressure system with no barrier? Could a tire rim, and I'll try and be very clear and concise for you, Craig, have gas pressure without a tire in a vacuum? Um, depends on the setup, actually, because on my screen right now, I am showing you gas pressure that is a, like a rim of a tire that, uh, that is next to a vacuum with no barrier. So um, why is that gas pressure there not immediately dispersing into that vacuum, Nathan? Do you want to go ahead and elaborate for the audience on yeah, what sure. this little halo light is and why you think this container proves you can have gas pressure without a container? Uh, is there any container around the gas pressure? That looks like a container to me, Craig. Is that thing no, not... No, 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 no. There's a vacuum around the gas pressure, not a container. So you're telling me that that vacuum isn't contained by something, Craig? The, the claim isn't that a vacuum can't be contained. You're moving the goalpost. The flat earth claim, as you quite clearly said, that is that if you have gas pressure, uh, it will immediately disperse to fill a low pressure system. What I am showing you is that that is not true. Because what you said about the second law of thermodynamics is wrong. I asked you specifically what the second law of thermodynamics is, and you said it's entropy, high pressure moves to low pressure. No, that is incorrect. The second law of thermodynamics states that the total entropy of an isolated system will increase over time. The Earth is not an isolated system. The isolated system is the universe, and you can have areas of entropy actually being reversed that will still increase the total entropy of the entire universe. That is what the second law of thermodynamics says. What you are seeing here is a vacuum of 10 to the negative 11 tor. 10 to the negative 11 tor. And inside that vacuum, with no barrier between the vacuum and the high gas pressure system, is a gas pressure of, um, uh, I can't remember what it is, it's got a nitrogen impurity in so that you can actually see it. And that is created by electro... Uh, magnetic forces that are running through the atoms, squeezing it together, creating an apparent force that is giving you a barrier of energy. So you absolutely can have gas pressure next to a low pressure system with no physical barrier. That is evidence there. Craig, that is a container. Also, plasma is not gas because- It's ionized gas. That was another interruption. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. You said something that. wrong. Craig, I'm in the middle of speaking. So if you can't control your impulses and wait until I'm done, just go on mute. Just stop saying wrong things then. Okay. Craig, we'll, what we we'll thought do I was wrong sure. at the beginning of the debate. James, we'll is he going to... Hey, yeah, he I thinks already, I'm wrong. I, I get it. He thinks for this spinning globe, I, I have to beat science right. with the camera so, into his in SpongeBob in imagination. To, in order for me to step in and remind about the time sections, Nathan, I, yeah. you have to let me talk. So, uh, what we'll do is fight the flat Earth. If you want to let Nathan speak, even if he says something wrong, we promise we'll give you a few yeah, yeah, minutes yeah. to uh, rebut it. No worries, James. Yes. Thank you so much. So, uh, as I was saying. Plasma is not a gas, and I want to thank uh, Sleeping Warrior for sending me this message. Shout out Sleeping Warrior, because he knew that Craig was going to bring this up. I also knew that Craig was going to bring this up. But he said plasma is not gas because its electrons react to magnetism. We don't breathe plasma. We breathe gas, Craig. Gotcha. I think that's... Uh... Okay, cool story, bro. But the claim is not just about gas. The claim, as stated many times by Sleeping Warrior, big shout out to Sleeping Warrior, is that a high pressure system cannot exist next to a low pressure system without a physical container or barrier between them. That is false. The universe is the container of the vacuum of space. And in this case, the vacuum of space is being represented by the vacuum inside that nuclear reactor. So you absolutely can have gas pressure next to a low pressure system without a physical container. And plasma is ionized gas. It's gas that's had the electrons stripped off. It is still gas, but the second law of thermodynamics does not refer specifically to gas. 
it is about the increase in entropy of an isolated system. So everything that you just said was wrong. Is it my turn to talk now, Craig? Yes. Excellent. So I, I just, you know, this is my second point. We already talked about non-moving Earth and how Earth does not rotate under things. And Craig admitted that Earth doesn't rotate under things. Thank you very much, Craig. So now we're on to uh, the container. You're saying the universe is the container. So I got a concession from Craig that we have a container. I'd love to see uh, where the edge of that container is. Um, I'm asserting that it's the sky. The sky is a map and a clock. That's why we've been using it to celestial navigate for thousands of years. Craig said in his opening that sailors have navigated for centuries with the sextant. Now, uh, I find that rather interesting because um, they didn't figure out about special relativity or gravity or, or any of this until Einstein rolled around and bendy space time and they still don't have a three-body equation for gravity. It's simply m1 plus m2 divided by distance squared. So this fairy tale idea, SpongeBob imagination science, that the globe makes predictions on a spinning ball in space with everything pulling towards everything else, is not real. It's fake. Okay. So Craig, I just want to ask you, can you have gas pressure around a tire rim in a vacuum without a tire? Yes or no? Yes, I'm demonstrating it now. Let me okay, put it back up. Wait. So can you demonstrate a tire rim? Craig, I'm sorry, but that's not a tire rim and that's not it gas pressure. It kind of looks like a tire rim. And you're introducing- If you put a tire rim in there, that would work. Does a tire rim have plasma, Craig? Plasma is ionized gas. We're talking about pressure. The second law of thermodynamics is not about gas. Notice how you deflected. Everyone, I want you to notice how Craig deflected. Yeah, cool. Well, you, no, you're not addressing any of my points, Nathan. Let's Hold on, Nathan. I'm going to go ahead and jot down for Craig. Actually, you interrupted me there because it was my turn to speak, dumbass. We'll let, we'll let. Uh, and another fight. insult. Are we going to moderate the insults, James, or are we just going to let those well, fly? I mean, that's me being nice. Before. You are a dumbass. I'm immediately before. So ahead. we're going to let T or okay. uh, Fight have his statement right now. Okay. Um, plasma is ionized gas. And again, the second law of thermodynamics, which was your claim, that was your point that you brought up. The second law of thermodynamics is not about gas. The second law of thermodynamics is technically about the flow of information in the universe. It's about the total entropy of the entire universe increasing over time. Inside your fridge is an isolated, uh, not an isolated system, sorry, it's a, it's a, it's, um, a, a micro system, right? The, technically, inside your fridge, the entropy is being reversed, but the total entropy of the system of your kitchen is still increasing because of the heat energy required to do that. So the second law of thermodynamics is not about gas pressure the way that you guys talk about. The second law of thermodynamics is simply about an increase in the entropy of an isolated system. The Earth isn't an isolated system. So you guys misapplying the second law of thermodynamics is not evidence for the flat Earth. Now, Nathan, before I pass it over to you, do you think you could address one of the 10 points that I brought up instead of addressing your misunderstanding of science? Yeah, of course, I'll go over all 10 of them with you, but I do have one more point that uh, fluid statics, large bodies of water at rest do not curve. So you have 10 and I just have three and there's just one left. Do you think we could do my one real quick and then we'll sure. cover your 10? Excellent. So, um, large bodies of water do not curve. Um, fluid statics prove this. You look at specular reflections. They are perfect mirrors of objects in the distance, and we see too far. How comfortable are you with Earth's radius being 24,901 miles around, Craig? That's not Earth's radius. Uh, Earth's circumference? That, well, it's been measured, so um, I'm pretty confident with it. Someone has measured the circumference of the Earth. That's a really long measuring tape, Craig. It's, it's been done many times, actually. The, the radius of Earth has been measured many, many, I'm many times. I'm the only one pointing out the interruptions. The moderator is not helping me. You asked me a question. What's going on there? Um, so, okay. well, like Nathan, is if if there is a question asked, that's where I was like, he'll probably, <laughs> like, that's <laughs> one where I'll, like, I'll let him. But if, <sighs> otherwise, we'll go over those timed sections of, like, three to four minutes. Unless okay. it's, I, I'm usually pretty clear when I ask Craig a question because you I literally know. asked me a question. I, 
I already know what okay. you believe, Craig. It's SpongeBob. Fairy I don't have beliefs, Nathan. Nation land. I used to be a globe earther. You, you keep putting years. words in my mouth, Nathan. I have to interrupt you here because you keep putting words in my mouth. So I don't will, have beliefs. Let's beliefs aren't important for me. I have four minutes. All right. So all I want to know is why large bodies of water do not curve, and the Earth's surface is mostly water. Craig, go ahead. Do you have any measurements of the flatness of water? That's a claim you just made. Uh, <laughs> okay. The flatness is not a claim. It's observable. We observe a flat Earth. Did you have some type of downward curvature proof or convexity of large bodies of water we could look mm -hmm. at? Uh, no, but you made the claim there that the surface of water is always flat. So I'd just like you to back up that claim. Yeah, Do you have any measurements of it? James, can you share my screen? Yeah. Ready? Excellent. So this is real cool because it actually gave us a, a curved surface. Mm -hmm. Now, if Earth had a curved surface, We're you just, would not get a spec. I can't see your screen yet, Nathan. Oh, okay, got you. Hold on. Maybe I got to hit this button right here and go just desktop. That should share my entire desktop. Gotcha. Excellent. So now if you have a flat surface, you will get a specular reflection. If you have a curved or irregular surface, light will diffuse. You'll get a diffuse reflection. Now, large bodies of water are perfect mirrors. Do I need to pull up some pictures of perfect mirrors, Craig? Um, um, can I address the point? Okay, go ahead. Large bodies of water don't curve. I'd love to see your evidence that they do. Oh, you, now you, that you, I have presented evidence. No, no you, you, I asked for a measurement. None of that is a measurement. And um, Nathan, earth real big, reflections real small. I mean, okay. there's nothing more to say than, than that. Earth's really fucking big. So, of course, you're not going to see a curve in the reflection because it, the Earth's too big to see it when, uh, from the perspective that you are at. It's, it's simple. I asked you for a measurement of flatness. Showing a specular reflection misunderstanding is not a measurement of flatness. I've got actual measurements of the radius of the Earth that I can present. Uh, do you have any actual measurements of the Earth's flatness? Yes, of course. Like any surve surveying done or anything? I'm very glad you asked. Okay, so can I speak now uninterrupted, Craig? Go ahead. Excellent. So there's lots of evidence of Earth's flatness that can be measured. If you take a look at Mount San Jacinto, which I covered in my opening arguments, it's 123 miles away. And when you pull up the infrared, almost the entire thing is there. Now, I know Craig has a problem with things we can see, so let's just move to world record line site microwave length. This was over about, well, this was about 150 miles over the Mediterranean. And according to Craig's SpongeBob fairy tale imagination science that he believes in, I've got to be in reality with the hammer. So there would be 2.6 miles of earth curve. And Craig would just assert that the world record microwave link distance is bending around 2.6 miles of vertical drop to reach a line of sight microwave repeater. Now, I think that's funny, and I'd like to hear Craig's explanation for that. Right, uh, I'll, I'll go one point at a time. So the Mount St. Jacinto photo, his observation location is 34.032204 by negative 118. 0.702984 and his altitude is 150 feet. So the curve calculator predicts a hidden amount for those figures of 6,158 feet. San Jacinto Peak is 10,834 feet above sea level. This leaves a predicted visible amount of 4,676 feet. Seeing that from that distance is absolutely no problem. You can even go and do it on peakfinder.com. So let's move on to the next one, the Axel World Record Distance Microwave. Um, so there is no actual evidence of the height that the emitters were above sea level. Um, so uh, the, and if you carry on reading the article of the page that you quoted there, they actually talk about the curvature of the earth and, and, and stuff in the same page that you were just on. So, um, and again, and also we could talk about microwave transmission testing when 
FE Corps did it and they couldn't get a signal on either of their tests. So, um, cool. Yeah, everything you just said was wrong again. You're good at this, keep it up. Excellent. So uh, your explanation for the reason why large bodies of water don't appear to curve is because Earth's real big, bro. Yeah, yeah, I said it nice and slow so you could understand. All right, cool story, guys. So Craig is just telling you all that the Earth is flat and you can't see curvature because it's a really big ball. Cool I story, showed curvature. Craig. So I, I now, showed you curvature in my evidence, so. Well, now that I've got a concession on two out of my three, three minutes. Points, you haven't had any concessions. Let's do the yes, three you minutes. Said that the universe is a container. You also said that Earth doesn't- That's not a concession. You, you never asked said. if the universe was a container. You also well, said that the Earth doesn't rotate under things. That doesn't mean the Earth doesn't rotate. It's just what I said is the Coriolis force is not Earth rotating underneath things. You can't put things in my mouth. Oh, and you also said nobody says that, but the most famous scientist in the world, Neil deGrasse Tyson, has been on record saying that the Earth rotated under a field goal. Cool, I'm not Neil deGrasse Tyson. I know, but so, you were Craig, fight the flat earth, and you mm -hmm. said nobody said earth rotates under things. The way he explained I, it was for a layman. Another interruption. And I am Nathan Thompson, and I pointed out that you, Craig, who believes in SpongeBob fairy tale, cool story, bro. land science, has to get science beat into his head with the science hammer. Cool story, bro. Yeah. You want to carry on now? We'll so I've three, I debunked, I debunked we'll all your on. points. I we'll do the three move. minutes from Nathan. Move. I yep. want to move real cool. quickly through your 10 points, Craig, that you have. We're doing, doing one by one. Um, I debunked all yours so we can move on to mine. Excellent. So uh, I'd like to be able to speak uninterrupted while I cover your 10th point. Which it, can you do it one at a time, though? Is that all right? Of course. I'm going to go over your 10th point, which was Polaris. And then, uh, James, I think Craig can rebut to what I say because these were his arguments in the beginning. And then we can just move on. Gotcha. That's it. If that works for you guys, works for me. Excellent. So Polaris means pole star. They have been celestial navigating with it for a very long time. They've also been doing astroarchaeology, which is lining up megalithic structures to the sky. Look up Orion's belt, matches up to pyramids. It's also where we get the swastika from. These constellations in the sky have not changed for centuries. Ask your grandma about the Big Dipper. It's always been the Big Dipper, not Orion's Belt. It's always been Orion's Belt. And the North Star has always been the North Star. Now, all stars circle Polaris and move east to west. The sky is a map and a clock on a fairy tale cartoon SpongeBob globe. That would not work because we're allegedly blasting 500,000 miles an hour through space as we chase the sun in orbit 66,600, 666, pay attention, miles per hour around the sun because we're 93 million miles away from the sun and we make an orbit allegedly once every year. There is no proof of gravitational orbits. I've asked NASA employees and they asked me if I believe in stuff. Science is not a belief. We don't need to talk about the B word. So I hope that's a clear and concise uh, explanation of why Polaris does not prove we are on a SpongeBob cartoon spinning globe, Craig. Can we go on to your point number nine or do you well, have- I, No, I'm going to rebut that first. Um, go ahead. Uh, well, I, actually, you didn't even address my point, which was that you cannot see Polaris when you get below the equator. Uh, and that it actually aligns with a sextant that can only work on a globe based on the angle decreasing as you go away from the equator, uh, away from the, uh, the North Pole towards the equator. So why, when you cross the equator, can you not see Polaris anymore? That was my point. Um, but to quickly rebut what you said, um, constellations have changed. I am showing you a um, chart of star positions changing over time, which was made by sailors so that they could actually keep up with celestial navigation because the stars did change over time. About 3,000 years ago, uh, the North Star was a different star, Thurban. Um, and in about 13,000 years time, based on the procession, it's going to be Vega, a very bright star. So star positions do change and the constellations don't even match up with their periods anymore. Um, so, you know, can you actually address my point before you move on of not seeing Polaris below the equator? 
course, Craig, I'm happy to address your point. It's called perspective. Everything above your head as it moves away from you will move towards the apparent horizon. Not real, not actual, apparent, changing day to day based on conditions, atmospheric conditions, because we live in a closed dynamic system. The air is not homogenous in, in, in which means uh, well, homogenous and, and isotropic, it's not the same, and it's different in all directions, guys. It's inhomogenous and anisotropic. So we don't have a tire rim with tire around it for an atmosphere. It's constantly moving around. That changes day to day. That's why we have a horizon. Craig, this is a chart from the 1800s. You haven't verified any of that. So to quote you, Cool story, bro. Yeah, it, it's all verified by other documents that were the same thing. Um, my, my, my evidence is actual documents. Um, so, but, but, uh, to, sorry, my evidence to uh, a story. What, what you just said about perspective doesn't make sense because um, the observers at either side of Magic Pancake World can both see these same stars. And it's the same stars they see, yet they're not in different positions because that wouldn't explain how they can see the same stars, but can't see the star there. Perspective doesn't answer this. It does not make sense. It is impossible on a flat stationary earth. So your, your answer is basically, I don't understand perspective. Cool. Craig, how are two people on the opposite sides of the earth both looking at stars? Wouldn't it be daylight on the other side of the earth yeah, but they, well, not necessarily, um, because the Terminator yeah. line, yeah, the Termi wait, listen, wait. listen, let me answer the Hold question, Warren boy, All right, the Terminator line goes along the middle, right, so there is going to be two points that either side of the disc, where they are both in darkness, yet they see the same stars, so the Terminator line answers your dumbass question. Hey guys, Nathan, I just want to think, Nathan, no, are you listening? Craig, Nathan, Craig Nathan, I, no, no, wait, wait, Nathan, are you listening? Nathan, Nathan, let's, Nathan, let's Nathan give are you listening? Let's give Nathan, are you the, listening? Excellent. How does how does the Terminator line appear on on the flat Earth? Uh, no, let me Craig, get we're up. Go through your nine points quickly. Uh, no, we haven't finished on this. We haven't finished on this. Hold on. We haven't finished. Flores, I already said. We haven't finished on this. We're gonna go and we're gonna move on. We haven't finished on this. It is finished. I think the, it's fine to give. It's. I do want to be be sure that Fight gets a chance to respond to like anything that he hasn't gotten to yet. At yeah, least, Nathan, at least you don't briefly, them, right? Please. So have you responded, Craig? You're good? Yeah, no. You can shut up and listen. That black line represents the Terminator line. You see it? Yeah. Yeah, so there's going to be a point either side of the disc where it is night. They will both be at night, either side of the disc. Then they move the other side of the Terminator line and it will be day. So they will both be seeing the same stars, yet they can't see Polaris. It wouldn't doesn't be, make sense. Wouldn't that be dusk and dawn? Not necessarily. Areas? The line is very big compared to the size of the Earth. You can still see stars at when it's nearly daytime. So on the line where day is transitioning into night, Craig, and then we'll move on, you're saying that it's not dusk and dawn? No, I'm saying they can see the same stars. Don't put words in my mouth. Oh, okay. And can you see stars at dusk and dawn? Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Right on. because uh, I can I see some stars in the day in Scotland. I can see some stars in the day. Excellent, Craig. Right on. Well, number nine, motion of the stars. Is that what we're going to go so over? So I've debunked you on that one. No, not at all, Craig. We're moving yeah, on. No, no, you didn't answer the question. How do the people either side of the disc see the same stars, yet they I can't see the stars above on the middle? one side of the earth, it would be night, and you have no observations to show me. You literally pulled up a cartoon flat earth and drew lines to fake stars you drew in the So are, are you sky. denying and that said, people and either said, side of that disc would see the same said, stars? Nathan, this happens, explain it. And I said- Are you denying that people well, would see the same stars on those positions? So yes, yes or no? Yes, I am, because on the other side- Right, of the cool, cool, day, you're a moron, we can move on. The daytime, not night, Craig. Except it would be nighttime either side of the Terminator, that side of the Terminator line, and then it would be day side. It literally says on Earth this thing, night and day. Line. It's night and, and day. 
Night. Let's Nathan. let's Nathan. take Nathan. maybe just a few minutes. We'll give each of you a chance to respond in your own few minute section. So, I think that. Cool. Yeah. No, Nathan's lost this bit, so we we can move on to the next one. So he can't explain why they see the same stars. Cool. Motion of the stars, Craig. Did you just want to elaborate on that, or should I get right into my response? Uh, well, yeah, when you're looking north, you see stars rotate counterclockwise. When you're looking south, you see stars rotate clockwise. And if you are at the poles either side, you will see them literally rotating around a different star in opposite directions. This happens because you are on a ball looking north or south. Gotcha. Right. Unless we can give you a, a couple of minutes if you want to respond, Nathan. Otherwise, we can go to the next part. You know, I just need to ask Craig one question. I think we can move on. Craig, will you agree that all stars move east to west? Yes. All right. So then they move the same direction. Excellent. Not Let's move on to number eight. No. If you are looking north, they would appear to rotate uh -huh. counterclockwise. Appear. If you are looking south, appear. they would appear Wait, to rotate appear. clockwise. You said appear. Yes, because that's okay. the way that you look appear. based on the way that you're looking. So appearances are not reality. You'll admit Which that... Way which way are you going to be looking if you're in the southern hemisphere, looking up at the sky, say from the South Pole? Craig, I'm the, going to talk. The, the fact. I'm going to start the, talking, Craig, and you're not allowed to talk when I start talking. That's called. Well, let me get my let me get my actual response out before you All get right. triggered Make and try sure to say you're going to leave talking, again. Craig. Okay. You ask me. Exactly. An observer directly at the North Pole will look up and see the stars rotate counterclockwise. An observer directly at the South Pole will look up and see the stars rotate clockwise. This is because you were looking north or south from those positions. Okay, we'll give you All a right. few minutes, Nathan. Yeah, um, because Craig believes in SpongeBob fairy tale science, that is not story, bro. He will make claims like when you look at the stars from the South Pole. Craig, have you looked at stars from the South Pole? I've been very, 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 very far south. Oh but not the South Pole. You've never observed stars from the South Pole, right? I've been pretty close to the oh, magnetic okay. South Pole. Excellent. I just, so you don't have any observations from the South Pole, do you? I mean, everyone that lives in the Southern Hemisphere is, is, would agree with me. In fact, I could give my friend in Australia a call right now and ask them where Polaris is. Oh. They wouldn't be able to see it. Oh, okay. Well, we're, we moved on from that. I know you want to go back in time to when people- uh, Yeah, I was just pointing out that you, you lost fall, that one. But it's 2020, people are letting go of that whole so, time. Rapid. So look, can I just clarify, you don't have an answer as to why you see stars rotate in opposite directions. Your answer is, I don't believe that they do. You no, lose Craig. this one as well then. No, cool. Craig. No, 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 you don't believe that they You're do. That's respond. cool. We can move on. No, 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 I'm going to respond. Because it's not that I don't believe that they do. You admitted, Craig, that all stars move east to west, right? Uh -huh. I even said that in my video. Excellent. So yeah, I didn't say so, I don't believe that happens. We are on the same page. Oh, I'm not on the same page as someone who harasses children. Hold on one second. I do all want to let Nathan finish. Move one direction, Craig, east to west on both models. Now, number eight was yep. the- Well, um, no, before you move on, I'm going to respond once again, because you are again wrong. As I said in my video, for all observers, objects in the sky appear to move east to west. So more accurately put, looking north, the stars will appear to rotate counterclockwise. Looking south, they will appear to rotate clockwise. There is no explanation for this on a flat earth. Once again, you didn't give an answer as to why it happens. You simply went, I don't believe that it does. It all moves east to west without understanding about the position that you would be on the globe. So now we can move on. What was number eight? The sun stays the same size? Yeah. Great, excellent. Just go follow Chris Van Matre. He's a geodetic land surveyor and a pilot, and he has the solar infrared or solar technology that Craig's talking about. And he did measure a change in the size. Not only that, but I've recorded the sun and the moon shrinking to small dots above the horizon. They didn't even intersect the horizon because I was in Colorado, 10,000 feet above sea level. So that's pretty much my response to that, Craig. Anything to say, or can we move to number seven, 
Shadow. Yeah, um, all observations with soda filters show the sun not changing in angular size. The one you're talking about used a, an NGT filter, not a soda filter. I've, I've seen that. So he didn't use a soda filter. So the filter can be get, gotten for a tenner off Amazon, although they're probably not delivering right now. Um, but when you actually use a solar filter, as the video playing right now shows, the angular size of the sun does not change at all. It simply doesn't. It stays exactly the same. And this, the video that you are talking about, where you observe the sun shrink to pretty much nothing, didn't have a solar filter. So of course it fucking did. So you will agree that the sun and moon shrink into little dots above the horizon? When if you, you don't to use a solar filter. Excellent. So you heard it here, guys. The sun and moon shrink into little dots above. If you the don't horizon. use a soda filter, and a soda filter allows you to see what is actually there, cool. you number are losing, Nathan. Please understand. Number seven, shadows on the clouds. I want to address this point for you. Uh, yeah, you let me get that nice picture up. Excellent. Is the is the sun below the mountain? Um, okay, it's not actually below, but because of perspective, Craig. As the sun moves away from you, it approaches the apparent, not actual, apparent horizon. So what you get yeah. is uh, a shadow being cast on the clouds because the sun is approaching the horizon. And eventually, it will disappear behind the not actual, mm -hmm. but apparent horizon. We call that a sunset. Craig. So are, are, are you saying that perspective changes the angle of light? Because that's not how it works, Nathan. Well, the only way that that could actually happen is if the sun was physically below the um, altitude of the mountain, because light travels in straight lines. There, it simply, perspective does not explain why it could cast an upward shadow because you will even say on the flat earth model, the sun doesn't actually go behind the horizon. It just gets too far away to see. That will not change the angle that light is coming up. This observation is impossible and is not explained by the law of perspective, which is alpha equals two times the arc tan of g over two r. So you are wrong again. Cool story. So eclipses, um, shadows are black, not glowing red and also Lunar eclipses can be observed during the daytime. It's called a Selenelion eclipse. Mm -hmm. And the shadow of a solar eclipse, the last one was 70 miles wide. Not my point. Was, uh, I'm still talking, Craig. Yeah, but you're not addressing my point, Nathan. Actually, one address sec, my point. One sec. Let's just, we'll, we'll let him finish the point, and then I promise, Craig, Craig if you want to point out that wasted the, his few minutes, you can. His point was that the shadow on a flat Earth would be a turtle, Okay. Craig, you don't that was have a joke. Yeah, I know you don't get humor. You are a joke. You're a no, you, flat Earth is the joke. So I'm going <laughs> to go know through this. your points one by one for and you. You've got them all wrong so far. Cool. Right. So one sec. let's let's go for a few minutes. Go ahead, Nathan. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so my two points: the shadows are black, not glowing red, and you can observe a lunar eclipse in the daytime. It's called a Selenelion eclipse. Um, they've been tracking these for hundreds of years. So um, that's all I have to say about that, Craig. Yeah, okay. That, again, you didn't address my point, which is how is a lunar eclipse possible on the flat Earth? It is something that is impossible on the flat Earth. The physics of the color are perfectly explained by light being refracted in certain ways. There is no issue there. There's also no issue with seeing it during the day. My point was... There is no explanation on a flat Earth for a lunar eclipse. Do you have an explanation as to what the lunar eclipse is? Because the heliocentric model does. Uh, the heliocentric model states that the lunar eclipse is a shadow. Shadows are black, not glowing red. No, 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 not, not what I asked. I asked, is there an explanation for the lunar eclipse on a flat Earth? Actually address hey, my point. I'm addressing what you said. No, 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 my question, Nathan. Why is there a lunar eclipse? on a flat earth I'm that is my question i'm gonna get to that so if you look up ancient civilizations like the mayans and the the egyptians and and also uh lots of ancient astronomers they were all making star maps and could predict for eclipses long before anyone believed in gravity and SpongeBob fairy tale imagination. Get to the point. Globes, 
Another interruption, Craig, because Craig just can't I listen. I asked you to a specific you. question. Can you just answer He's it? Allergic to the truth, so and he avoids real <laughs> science like the plan. I'm going to answer my question, Nathan. If not, you can concede another point. Like, with a hammer, it's insane. Okay. Like Nathan, I think I need to ask the question once more because you just keep avoiding it. All right. Try and focus. I know it's hard, but just try and focus. On a flat Earth, why is there a lunar eclipse? Of course. Let me explain, Craig, really, really clearly and succinctly. Ready? I'm waiting. So the Earth is flat and lights in the sky change color sometimes moving on number five was no nope. okay I, no we're not done we are not done well, that done. is so a bullshit answer do you have something, to say? Have something uh, to say? that is a bullshit answer oh, with no actual up, explanation there right. is a perfect explanation for it on the heliocentric model there is no issues with it on the heliocentric model at all okay Shadows none black, at all Craig. no there is red. there is other, there's other reasons there actually look into it Okay, there, there is no problem with the way lunar eclipses work on the heliocentric model. Just going lights in the sky change color because is dumb as fuck. Well, just is, there, is there an explanation for why the moon gets darker on a flat earth other than just because? Because that's dumb as fuck. Just so you know, lights in the sky changing color don't prove earth curvature so when you ask not my me, question how does this work on a flat earth that's not like my question saying, craig that's like saying why do i put milk in my cereal on a flat no. earth no. it has nothing to I do want an explanation with as to why it happens shape of the earth craig just so like you, you don't milk have an explanation cool cool that's another thing that you can't explain on a flat earth Awesome. Moving on to number five. Number five. This so was, what, we, we fight for five now? You've, you've got uh, wrong? That's awesome. You, this was you claiming that distant objects appeared lower than objects in the foreground. Correct, Craig? Yeah. Uh, let me get the observation up so I can explain it to you. I don't need you to explain it to me, Craig. I'm going to tell you how it's working. You can respond, and then we're going to move on. You're going to get it wrong, but you can try. All right. So I'm going to get it wrong. Excellent. So, Craig, will you agree that as objects move away from you, they get smaller due to perspective? Absolutely. Excellent. So that's what we're seeing here. You can go ahead and say whatever you want because you believe in fairy tale globe nonsense, and then we can go over cool. number four. It does not explain why it would drop below eye level. Things getting smaller would make it sink into eye level, not physically fall below it. That is not how perspective works. Perspective literally doesn't explain that. Perspective, again, which is alpha equals two times the arc tan of g over two r, does not explain that observation, Nathan. Because what you're actually seeing there is this. Look very closely. That is what you're seeing here. You are seeing the mountain visibly below the tangent of your eye line. That is impossible and not explained by perspective in any way, shape, or form, okay? So that's another one you got wrong. So what are we, six for six? Good show. Number four, the ring laser gyroscope. Did I get oh, that? Oh, yeah. Right? Well, whichever one it was Bob used, they both do the same thing. Excellent. So if you change altitude, the rotational speed, what you believe is the rotational speed that is displayed inside of the gyroscope changes by over 1%. Um, no, it doesn't. You, I know what you're talking about. You're wrong. Did you know that? No, what happens is as the pressure changes on the instrumentation, it will show a slight deviation as the pressure is changing. But if you let the pressure settle, the actual rotational speed is measured exactly the same as 15 degrees per hour. I read the exact paper that you're referring to, and they literally talk about a change in pressure whilst in operation. And the change in pressure will cause a warping of the um, equipment as the delta of pressure is changing, which will, once settled, then show a 15 degree drift per hour. But again, you avoided my point, which is why on a flat stationary non-rotating earth, does it measure anything at all? Yeah, Craig, well, I like to talk about science. That's no, why don't. I have the science hammer, Craig. And that, when that's about all the science you know. About science, it's observation then hypothesis 
than a rigorous experimentation, Craig. That is You're not gonna answer. Cool. scientific method. Would you agree that the scientific method is observation, hypothesis, and experimentation, Craig? There's a lot more to the scientific method, and it actually changes depending on the field of science. Uh, you wouldn't get it, it's science. So the scientific method is evolving? No, it's always been slightly differently so applied for different branches of science. Been. Excellent. Yes. And yeah. it's always been. But again, you are avoiding my question by trying to derail it about what the scientific method is. My question to you, Nathan, is why does, does every interferometric fiber optic gyroscope on the planet measure a 15 degree rotation in three axes? Not only that, but a one degree a day rotation on a 2D plane, which represents our rotation around the sun. Now, the direct question, why does it pick it up? Don't deflect, just answer the question. Craig, so as I was getting into how science is obvious. Yeah, no, just answer the question. I don't care what you think about science, just answer the question. For you, holding your feet to the fire, Nathan, answer the question. I don't know, are you there? Are we good? Did we lose James? Still you're going to answer the question? All right, good. I'm glad you're there, James. So I'm keeping track for you on the interruptions, don't worry. And I got all the yeah. insults tallied here too, just so you know. Cool, do you want another one, Dots? I knew coming into this, let's, we'll go ahead and add another one there. You lost all the chance for respect when you harass children. Okay, Don't so act we'll, like you we'll deserve have, it. We want to give Nathan a chance to speak. So go ahead, Nathan, on whatever you were going to say. Yes, of course. So science is observation, then hypothesis, then experiments. But if all you have is we saw a light in a ring laser gyroscope and it did something you don't have any science you are scientifically illiterate go ahead craig your response and then we're going to move cool. on everything you just said was wrong again so my observation i noticed that the earth appears to rotate based on my observation of celestial bodies my hypothesis the earth is rotating my experiment to show that is to test using the known effects of the sagniac effect the Sagnac effect is all to do with the speed of light and the fact that the speed of light is constant in a vacuum. Now, using the Sagnac effect, we can actually detect if there is motion based on the closest thing we have to a reference frame, the cosmic microwave background radiation. And in reference to that, the experiment based on my uh, observation and hypothesis shows that we are rotating as expected. So, um, there's all your things answered. But again, you avoided the question, Nathan, and we're not moving on until you answer the question. Why does the gyroscope pick up a 15 degree drift in three axes? We're not moving on until you answer. Oh, we are moving on. Craig. No, we're not moving on until you answer. I already went over. The no, 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 no. We're not moving on until you answer and why. Now it's not science. And I don't care what you think about science. No we're not moving on until you answer the question. So you're just going to interrupt me the entire time. Yeah, okay. unless you answer the question, we're not moving on. Okay, well. We're, at, we're sticking with that until you answer the question. I think, let's let's, let's try this. We'll, we'll see once, once uh, Nathan, if you do a quick, if you do your quick normal shtick with SpongeBob, we'll let Nathan do that and then see like what comes after. I think he wants to cool. preface each response with that. So let's, Nathan, if you want to, you got th like two or so minutes. Yeah, I mean, if you believe and have a good enough imagination, you can think you're SpongeBob and you live in a pineapple under the sea. But that's not science. Science is observation, hypothesis, and experimentation. Now, what you observe in a ring laser gyroscope is light moving. What you observe on a flat earth when you look up at the sky is also light moving. Now, Craig will assert that the man-made instrument is determining Earth rotation, but there is mm -hmm. no observation in nature to conclude the Earth is moving, and then we would test the cause of that effect. He has a man-made gyroscope with light moving inside, and on a flat Earth, we observe lights moving, Craig. Look up or take a time lapse of the stars. All right. 
I'm done. Okay, so no, you didn't answer my question again. I'm going to ask it. Why? Why does the Why does the gyroscope? Let's give him a response. My, my, again, you didn't answer my question apart from saying light moves, which is dumb as fuck. So I'll ask it again, and we're not moving on until you answer the question. Why does an interferometric fiber optic gyroscope pick up a 15 degree rotation in three axes? Please explain. We are moving on, Craig. No, I'm not moving on. Excellent. Well, I'll talk about the Coriolis force. It was your third cool. point. Cool. No, no, yeah, Nathan, answer my question. We're not moving on. Okay. Nathan, no. No, I'm Nathan, why does a gyroscope pick up that drift? Oh, if you throw a ball in the Nathan, air. Nathan, why does a gyroscope pick up a drift? Drones. Nathan, no, I'm not done. We're not done with that, that section. We're not moving on. Answer the question. I told him Answer the question. Science. We don't Answer have the fucking major. question, we'll Moron Boy. Off the Q&A. Thanks so much, everybody, for Thanks. your interesting questions. So Nathan lost. We appreciate your being here, folks. It's been a wild one. We are probably not going to get through all the questions, but we'll sure try. We're going to move fast, as fast as we possibly can. So thanks so much. Astronomy Live. Who asks? <clears throat> By the way, folks, forgot to mention, if you do have a question, you can fire it into the old live chat. It's going to be tough to get to them, but we'll try. Uh, Super Chat pushes your question hey, to the top. We'll get to, them, bro. we'll get to them. They're all for me anyways, because everyone heard what Craig's believes in second grade. We're going to jump into it. So. Astronomy Live, thanks for your Super Chat. They said, you claimed my Falcon Heavy demo flight video was 20 seconds too long. It's only 20 seconds too long if you compare it to... Arabsat, which is a different launch and a newer version of the rocket. Why is that? I'm not even sure who that's for. That's definitely for Nathan. Yep, definitely for me. And that guy is obviously a globehead who lives in a SpongeBob reality because no, he, he goes I to rocket launches and records them, actually. I'm just letting you know. Greg, that was a question for me. Thank you. I know. I was just correcting you so you knew who you were responding to. Why are you Nathan. talking during a question that was for me, Craig? Well, it was clear you didn't go, know who you were responding to, so I, I was letting I was you know. in the middle of speaking again, Craig. Do you know what interrupting is and how it's rude? Interrupting. Yes, Nathan, I do. I was just making sure you're aware of who you were speaking to. That was all. It's rude to interrupt people. Oh, I was helping you out. I was okay. helping you out. The one, two, Look, three, Nathan, four, we're going to give you a chance to respond to that. Otherwise, you have to go to the next question. Yeah, I didn't say that JM Truth did. I never made any claims about his video. I don't know who he is. I have no idea who that guy is. So these are how Globers are, guys. They live in SpongeBob. <laughs> All, right. All right. All right. Enough. All right. Thank you. Mayor Saves, thanks for your super chat. They said, they asked, uh, Nathan, without invoking God, what scientific laws hold the flat earth together to keep the planet flat zero well so with scientific laws uh, invoking god you could just take a look at fluid statics large bodies of water do not curve fluid dynamics how the air would move around a moving atmosphere there would it would move separately from the earth and things you throw in the air would have a drag but as fight the flatter said earth doesn't rotate under things in the air so, hope that answers your question. Gotcha. Thanks so much. Next up, appreciate your super chat from Kang024, who asked question for Nathan. Given the sun does not change in angular size to an observer as it sets, please explain a, a sunset. Yeah, of course. I, I, if you would have listened, the sun does change angular size. Chris Van Matre has recorded it. He's a land surveyor and pilot and flat earther. And I've recorded personally the sun and moon shrinking into a little dot above the horizon. Star trails also don't intersect the marine horizon. They vanish off in the distance above the horizon, just as we would suspect on a flat stationary earth. Thanks for the question. Any more questions? Super chat, James. James, I'll be here all night. To I mean, you're getting everything wrong. Is it no. fair to just get everything wrong for these people? Maybe you could try answering something right. Next, that would be nice. They're paying money. Nuga, thanks for your super chat. Let's see. That's like a lot of these are pretty uh, abusive. So I'm gonna I'll let some abuse go, but some of these are like, dear gosh. Yeah, um, it's because King, the heliocentric. It's because you're a disgusting human being. Kang024. Thanks for your super chat. They said, question for Nathan. 
If a mentally ill hobo shouts deluded rubbish... <laughs> oh, this one, I'll, I'll just let it slide. Shouts deluded rubbish at children, does that mean the earth is flat? They think I'm homeless, James. How funny is that? Oh my God. <laughs> Eight shower heads. <laughs> Thanks so much. Steven Steen, you sicko. Thanks for your super chat. Glad to see you. He says, tested positive for COVID-19. Telling my lover's team, fight the flat earth in James. That's pretty, Dude. pretty nasty. I think he might actually have COVID-19. but I mean, uh, if anyone's going to get it, it's, it's Steen, right? That's true. In all the men's truck stops, the men's bathrooms at truck stops and things. So thanks for that, Steven Seed. Anamorphic Mind, thanks for your super chat. They said, save Nathan's dog. I don't know what... Nathan, is your dog in danger? No, I mean, Theo's so good. I go live with him pretty much every day. I've got the most awesome, beautiful coon hound. Hey, hey, why don't you pick up after your dog when it shits on someone's garden? Um, okay, so Craig, just so you know, I wasn't going for a full walk that day. He had just went <laughs> poo in the backyard, and I went out in front of the house, and Gio, of course, pulls me down the street, pulls me around the corner. The kids were outside. That's when you I should, went oh, If you're walking your dog, no matter how little, you should have bags with you. That yeah. is really bad dog ownership and a shitty, shitty thing to do. You were near a school. Dog feces contains parasites that can literally blind children. So as well as harassing them, you were putting them in danger. <laughs> Yeah, you guys hear that? If you have dogs and they poop in the backyard, they're going to make your children go blind, according to Craig. Well, right on. No, cool. according Craig, to... More questions. We're going to... What we were by... What, let you got to let you know, folks. Some of these, I'll let them slide, but some of them are so abusive that I'm like, gosh. And so really there's dumb. no guarantee. If your, your super chat is abusive, there's no guarantee it will be read. I think that's something I've stated like many times before in previous streams. Yeah, James, I run the largest research group. If I'm not here to insult, research group. I, don't, I don't allow insults in my group. Let's just move forward with people who have scientific questions. Oh, that's fucking brilliant. I want to get some group. value to your audience because they certainly didn't get that. Hey, hey, they got plenty of value seeing you be an idiot. That they, they got to see exactly what they wanted. Prainy Whoa. Beaver, thanks for your super chat. They asked, it wasn't an insult, it was a fact. Has your dog returned home, or I mean to your car? Now, Nathan, that doesn't look like a car that you're sitting in. I don't know, but yeah. is it so... Hey, James, it, let me be very yeah, clear, here? okay? When you don't know where you live, you can't assume to know you... No, we're oh, look, other he's avoiding a question either. again. And Craig's interrupting me again, the super chat. Oh, I was talking to myself, actually. I'm keeping myself entertained. Uh, then go on mute, Craig, because nah, the, that's all right. the audience is asking me questions let's, and you're let's, interrupting. Let's, I, Trust me here, Nathan. Since, They're here to see me rip the, you since apart. the super chats are already, a lot of these are <laughs> at, at minimal derogatory toward Nathan. Let's at least <laughs> let him finish before you jump in fight. Okay. Uh, let's Sorry. see. Kang024, thanks for your super chat. They said, question for Nathan. Please provide an explanation for the hundreds of weather balloon flight videos that show the curve of the Earth. You should have seen some of them. Most are made by school children. Yes. Most of those use what's called a GoPro lens. And when you're SpongeBob living in a pineapple under the sea, you think that a lens that curves the horizon is proof you live on a cartoon spinning globe. But I'm here, Nathan, the crusader for justice, the freedom fighter that's going to teach all you guys where you live. You don't, that's not actually how it works. You guys. said child, you, you yeah. said child harasser wrong. So um, the dog Never. cam, oh. the dog, the dog oh. cam that um, all the flat like to use, there was two cameras on dog cam. One of them is clearly a um, one that's warped in his fisheye, but the other one, you can actually watch and see wow. that it's not fish Craig, eye because nobody will... asked you anything. Nathan, Craig. Nathan, the adults are talking. We're quiet now. So uh, you can actually watch the other one. Let is let not fish eye because it goes over the center point many times and it stays curved and it matches the curve predictions. So um, even the dog cam shows a physical curve on a camera that doesn't have fish eye. It's amazing. Craig, what was the elevation on the dog cam? Um, I don't know exactly the elevation, but you could quite clearly see curve, especially when you compress it at the side. Okay, so you don't know the elevation at all. Do you think it was above 120,000 feet, Craig? Or not? I'm not sure of the actual distance, Nathan. Do you have hearing difficulties? Could, 
Could you look it up for do, us? Do you have hearing quick? difficulties? Since it was your argument, can yeah, you um, look it up for I'm us? actually looking for the vi the video to to show you what I'm talking about. You can uh, one second. I see the video. I, I know what you're talking about. I oh just, well, you know what I'm talking about—the one that shows curve. Cool story. I'm wondering what the elevation was for. It that. was whatever elevation the dog cam was, and it showed the curve there. So you won't be specific and tell me at what Because else? I don't know the exact answer, Nathan. And but what I do it. know is that it quite clearly showed curve. Well, Craig, you're not very busy during this question and answer part. Maybe you- Oh, no, I, I'm, I've been busy. Don't Maybe. worry. I, I'm, right, I'm writing out. a script for the videos I'm going to make about you. Can you find out for us while I'm answering more questions from the heliocentric- Is your Google broken? What? Next up. Next. <laughs> All right, next uh, up. Razark9, thanks for your super chat. They're- uh, Full name is Razark Nine Flat Tard Tear Drinker. <laughs> I'm sorry, Nathan, but come on. Some of these, it's like you got. That's pretty funny. <laughs> hey, I'm not saying not, they're not all not funny. I mean, some people are, are extremely. Uh, they said, "Hey, fight the flat Earth. You're awesome." Question for Nathan before he rage quits: Why do you block and delete anyone who slightly disagrees with you, troll or not? So you got a fan out there, fight, and Nathan, you got a critic out there. Yeah, of course. So um, uh, I run the official Flat Earth and Globe discussion for the last five years. I've answered every question under the sun at least a thousand times. So when people harass me or call me names or insult me, I immediately block them because I don't have to put up with that like. on social media. It's not my job. My job is to educate people. You don't have a job. <laughs> want to learn <laughs> you've never had a fucking job and your job is to interrupt me craig because you have well you're blatantly just lying now just like your flyers contain blatant lies all right so what? next up thanks for your super chat from maynard saves who says please explain why the pyre reese map indicates antarctica as a continent and not ice wall how far back does the conspiracy go um well, I've never even heard of this map, but the United States Geological Survey, USGS, which are the people who make maps, they use a flat earth to not only calculate distances outward from the North Pole, but also for making maps of Antarctica. I find that very interesting, so. Cool. Um, do you wanna show that they use a flat map or is it a projection of something? Because every geological survey ever done has shown that there's a curve. We didn't right. even get to me showing you the evidence of actual geological surveys showing the shape of the Earth. Hey, I mean, SpongeBob, you start the back and forth portion is done. Ooh. We moved on to the question and You've answer. got a thing about SpongeBob. Is that what you're fetish, oh. dude? I don't Next have up. to talk to you. No, no, you do. You do. <laughs> Next up, right. Kang024, thanks for your super chat. Question for Nathan, do you think that... The, uh, let's see. I don't understand this. I've never seen Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. They said, do you think that the child catcher from Chitty Chitty Bang Bang thinks the earth is flat? Next question, please, James. Michael Dresden, thanks for your super chat, who says, Nathan Thompson already won in caps. You got <laughs> a fan out there. Nathan. He's never won anything in his life. Steven Steen, thanks for your super chat, who said, COVID-19 was invented by NASA to close schools after Nathan uh, started telling kids the truth about playgrounds to lock him inside. Stop uh, censoring Nathan. Yeah. In all seriousness, guys, uh, COVID-19 right. is, no, is extremely we're gonna serious. Keep on, we're going to keep on going. Fabian, men of 36 go, thanks for your super chat to say, given a right triangle, the adjacent side of a 30 degree angle is... 11 111.3 kilometers calculate the length of the opposite side of the triangle can nathan thompson solve this simple exercise in trig uh yeah get at me uh flat earth flyers at gmail.com happy to help you with that you can't do math. <laughs> gotcha let's see thanks for that next up thanks pax americana for your super chat they ask please ask nathan how this conspiracy has been kept under wraps for dec decades and why only a bunch of uh uh let's see i'm trying to think of i don't think that'd be hate speech but that would be it's pretty harsh well sp some people who have no rec they have poor recognition of other minds and social rules on youtube have found quote the truth yeah, of course. So every ancient civilization knew that the earth was flat and stationary. 
that guy's just basically calling all his ancestors idiots because he worships the government. Ancestors were idiots. They didn't know anything. Another interruption because he worships the government on his SpongeBob fairy tale imagination religion called the heliocentric model. Gotcha. Next up, thanks for your super chat from Anamorphic Mind. You forgot Satanic. Let's see. Says Stephen Steen lost this debate. Agreed. We agree on that. Thank you. Stephen Steen follows up with a super chat. Says we all win when James is here. Rawr. Gosh, Stephen. Nasty guy. Thanks for your super chat. Shannon Nemi. I hope I pronounced that right. Let me know if I didn't. Says Nathan, that's not how uh, that's not how any of that works. This is earlier in the debate, so could have been in reference to, I can't remember exactly what it was in reference to. Thanks for being vague, Lopez. Stringer News 1, thanks to your super chat. They said, Nathan, you claim, quote, fluid dynamics means that air must act like a solid, not a fluid. Why? That's not how actual fluids work. Cool story. No, no, he asked you why. Okay, I was very clear how fluids work, and I showed many examples in my introduction. Gotcha. Thanks. The Athens 619. Thanks for your super chat. They said, let me Google flat earth. Nothing but cartoons. Can't have it both ways. Natalie, that's special pleading. Yeah, of course. I never claimed to have a picture of the entire flat earth, but if you go outside and take a picture, a real picture, not one you get from NASA, you'll see a flat earth. And those are all real pictures. So yes, we have lots of real pictures of the flat earth. Gotcha. Thanks for that. Uh, next up, thanks for your super chat from Girthy Earth. Nathan, your Coriolis effect or the atmosphere turns with the Earth exclusive is called a bifurcation fallacy. Both can and do happen. I know. I tried to explain to him. Yes. When you have a SpongeBob fairy tale religion that doesn't match with science, then you <laughs> did believe... you just drop your drink? That's, that's another. No, I didn't. I dropped a SpongeBob pineapple imagination fairy tale globe land. Who lives in a pineapple under the sea? Thank you very much. Let's see. No <laughs> doubt. Thanks for your super chat. Who said, "Stop talking like a pretentious child, Natalie." He can't go watch something else. Gotcha. King Conquest, thanks for your super chat. They said, Nathan, you only feel acceleration, ch acceleration in parentheses, changes in velocity. Uh, you do not feel constant velocity. In a vacuum at constant velocity, you feel nothing, right or wrong? Wrong, because, and let me be very clear for the SpongeBob in the audience, if you're on a merry-go-round going 1,000 miles an hour, you definitely feel it whether you're accelerating or not because all things that are curving or in a curved path, not moving linear, they're accelerating to the direction that they're curving, my friend. So when globeheads who believe in fake fairy tales, you don't know what any of them, imagination man. science say, hey, hey Nathan, like, you Nathan. don't feel velocity, you only feel acceleration. What Nathan. these people honestly are saying is that you could be on a merry-go-round going a bazillion miles an hour and you wouldn't feel it because you're not changing speeds. <laughs> How funny is that, guys? That's what Globeheads... Wow, so, so Nathan, Nathan, believe. hey, Nathan... How, how much would you feel if you're on a merry-go-round rotating once a fucking day, you moron? Uh, Craig, I'm answering questions from the audience. If you have a question, please... Oh, I know you don't know the answer. Is, which, you know, Next there's no up. point. Look at James, and I will answer your question, Craig. Sleet. You don't, you don't know the answer. It's cool. Thanks for your question from Sleet. They said that given that GPS, GPS works mid-ocean and that GPS antennas are less than one square inch, therefore not Lauren antennas... And given that GPS can be blocked by metal objects directly above the antennas, how does it work? Yeah, so GPS is a multiple, a multitude of things, guys. It's not cartoons in space. And I, I really want to share this. Any evidence of that? If you could go ahead and or... share my screen, James. I do want to share. I should be sharing my entire screen. Um, you know, I looked up before this debate uh, a couple things like satellites in space and where am I at here, guys? One second. Here we go. 
Hey, wow, that page you just showed debunked what you said earlier about the second law of thermodynamics. Hey, you have to super check. Oh, Nathan. Uh, Answer let's, your let's question. Listen, listen yeah, to I'm going to I'm gonna, I'm gonna, gonna give you shit so can you can stop whining about it. Because the super chat no. was me, Craig. I'm responding no. to the super chat. You're being you stupid. I'm just right. pointing you out. You have to give him a chance to respond to the super chat. Go ahead, Nathan. Thank you very much. So, yeah, cartoons uh, is all you get when you look up satellites in space. Look up the South Pole from space, and you get a bunch of cartoons. Look at the solar system in space, and you get a bunch of cartoons. Cartoons are not real, ladies and gentlemen. We do not live in a car. These are cartoons, just like Simpsons, South Park, Scooby-Doo, SpongeBob SquarePants. That is what the globe religion is. It is a cartoon fairy tale imagination land cosmology hey just because you don't understand doesn't make it wrong it just makes you an idiot excellent james i want to make sure i cover that question more specifically what was that question exactly relating to he said given that gps works mid-ocean and that gps antennas are less than one square inch therefore yep. not i got it i got it they think that cartoons are taking care of all these transmissions around the world but ladies and gentlemen me, Nathan, here to tell you it's not cartoons doing it. It's to use ground-based towers sometimes. They have fiber optic cables connecting all the major countries that move lots of information around. And then they can use modified U-2 spy planes to also move that information around. And they have Navy vessels on the ocean. So uh, not cartoons, a multitude of things. It's called a network. Like Verizon, you ever seen the commercial? Uh, can you hear me now? Yes. It's the network. Gotcha. Thank you very much. Um, Next up, can I just res can I just respond to that quickly, um, to, Nathan? Given that it's a wrong, chat wrong, Nathan, wrong, wrong. I do have to. Let's see. Okay, Sparky NJ. Thanks for your super chat. They said, Nathan, do you think they send satellites into space solely to take pictures of other satellites? Really think, if you can, on whether this makes sense. No, I don't think they send satellites into space. Satellite launches are parabolic, and we have no real pictures of satellites in space, and space would violate the second law of thermodynamics, so space is fake. NASA is using zero-G um, planes, uh, CGI, augmented reality, harnesses, hairspray, and the Natural Buoyancy Laboratory, which is a giant pool, to fake everybody into thinking space is real. Gotcha. Next up, thanks so no much. No evidence. Good claim. Girthy Earth, thanks for your super chat. They say SpongeBob proves that Flat Earth, Nathan Thompson, 2020. Thank you very much. Rusty P, thanks for your super chat. They say, My okay, at this point, when he brings you. up Fuck. the train part, <laughs> they said, okay, at this point, when he brings up the train part, um, Nathan Thompson is confirmed a Poe. No one is really believing that. So... Gotcha. Want to respond? You can. You don't have to. Hard, man, Globy. Gotcha. <laughs> Stringer News 1, thanks for your super chat. They said, Nathan, in the Chicago photo, where is the Buckingham Fountain? If it's flat, we should see it. Okay. So this is when globe heads forget that we have atmosphere in, uh, and that they think that there's no effects looking through 60 miles of atmosphere. Now, of course, you're gonna have some waves, you might have some evaporation, there might be some smog, there might be some light attrition, things might have reached its Lots angular. of might be's, no facts, typical. There's a lot of variables you have to take into account. Yeah, but the effects of refraction have actually been quantified and we know exactly what they are. All those variables have actually been taken into account. Just because you don't understand it doesn't mean that it's fake. We understand refraction. It's been quantified quite well. Gotcha. I don't have to talk to you anymore, Craig, because uh, back and forth is over. I've moved on to question and answers from the yeah, audience. Yeah, cool. I'm just telling you when you're wrong, which Next is up, always... Let's see. Fargoth92, thanks for your super chat. They said Nathan is trying to be inmate um, 0645-2017 wannabe. Thanks for that. King Conquest, thanks for your super chat. They said, funny thing is, Nathan stole Kent Hovind's line about imagination land. Kent Hovind doesn't even believe in a flat earth. What are your thoughts, Nathan? Is it... Listen, listen to the Globers and how they have to talk about believes. 
Kent Hovind doesn't believe in a flat earth. Yeah, well, Kent, if you want to debate me on what you believe, I'm happy to have a debate with you. Hit up James, we can do it on this channel. But the earth is not a spinning ball. There is no scripture to support that and no scientific evidence. People have been duped. Thanks for that. Next up, Bella Wrong. Charge. Thanks so much. Let's see. Said uh, Nathan Thompson is a Kent Hovind wannabe. Very nice. By the way, if you want the debate with Kent Hovind, I will try to set it up, Nathan, because that is epic. And I don't know if he'll go for it. I don't think he likes Flat Earth. But Common Sense Criticism, thanks for your super chat, said, I'm writing down that you've been interrupting. They're imitating you, Nathan. <laughs> Edward Eric, thanks for your super chat. They just didn't say anything. Thanks for your, that. They said, please don't let Nathan Gish gallop like Hovind. Let's see. We're pretty laissez-faire. Um, Nathan, if you want to respond on whether or not you think you were gish galloping, you can. But I'll defend myself. As long as I was gish galloping like Hovind, because if I do stuff like Hovind, that's a compliment. It's okay to be a copycat as long as you copy the right cat. Shout out Ken Hovind. I think he's awesome. Gotcha. Thanks for he that. He thinks you're an idiot. Sparky, New Jersey. Thanks for your super chat who said, Natalie, if you're going to mimic Kent Hovind, you are, well, let's see. You were more silly than I thought. Thanks for that. Let's see. This it's like there. I don't know if any of these people are Kent Hovind fans. King Conquest, thanks for your super chat. They said modern day debates do not jump in. Let them go unhinged. Flat Earth doesn't deserve a structured debate. It's not a debate. It's a show. Let it go. So I don't know if they meant to make it a rhyme at the end, but uh, thanks for that idea. Dennis B or Dennis D, thanks for your super chat. They said Nathan said he won't attack Craig. Then mocks him next up sleepy dan <laughs> nathan's gonna play some tunes it says uh nathan we find spheres <laughs> often in nature other planets water drops atoms even covid19 oh i don't know if i should have said that where in nature do we find snow globes I don't know if I said with that. <laughs> spinning lights that's funny. So yes, there are some balls in nature, ladies and gentlemen, but if you look at large bodies of water, they are not analogous to a raindrop because a raindrop, if you look at the reflection, it will be distorted. It will not be a perfect mirror because the surface is curved. When a surface is flat, you get a specular reflection. It's a perfect mirror. Good question. Thanks for super chatting. We can go all night, guys. Gotcha. Thanks for that. Eric Veer Thaler, 92, thanks for your super chat. Uh, they asked, would Nathan ever do a debate with Aaron Raw? I'm wondering, have you ever done one with Aaron already? No, I didn't know Aaron was an anti-flat earther, but I'm happy to beat some science into Aaron. How would you do that? You don't know any science. Next You're up, honest. thanks You're project, for your right? super chat. So we'll, we can ask Aaron. Maybe it'll happen. I don't know. I, th I think he said he's busy till like May, but... Apollo Jedi, uh, thanks for your super chat. They said, Craig interrupts because he knows he's losing in all caps. Craig, you've got yeah, to exactly. It. Yeah, they're 100% they're right. Obviously, I lost the debate in which my opponent couldn't answer a single question and just went, it's lights in the skies, guys. Questions are not happening. Next up, Sorry, Alan, Craig. Alan Bupri. Forgive me if I mispronounced it. Let me know. They said, Nathan, do you understand that no one gives a tish about how many times Fight the Flat Earth insulted you? Well, I, I, mean, can... I was being nice to him, honestly. I mean, it really shows that they don't have any science when they have... Oh, except we have all the science. Hold on, let's, like, let's let him give a response. All these, most of these Super Chats are quite hostile. Go ahead, Nathan, really quick. Yeah, it's all right. Um, and notice how they're all directed towards me and nobody has any questions for Craig because- Yeah, because Craig, I got everything right. They like talking to an idiot. No, because we learned what Craig believes in second grade and people- I don't are, have beliefs. People are starting to learn that we're not on- you're an idiot. And they just, Craig, please stop interrupting while yeah, we, we do fight. We have to, I mean, a lot Bro, of these, these are I'm trying to answer all, for your question. These, are, for these are pretty much all against uh, Nathan already. So it's to let him respond, I know, I know. being able to respond is pretty fair. Yeah. I, nobody has any questions for Craig. So, Craig, until I'm done <laughs> talking, please go on mute or something. Nah. Next yeah. up. 
Brad Dubay, thanks for your super chat. They said, anybody else feel like Rimmer keeps putting Lister on notice? Are these some sort of, are these like slangs that I don't know because I'm a boomer? It's talking about Red Dwarf. Okay. Gotcha. Oh, and God, Nathan, you suck at guitar, dude. Seriously. I know. Next up. AJ Raven Wolf, thanks for your super chat. He said, stop abusing SpongeBob in all caps. Dolly88, thanks for your super chat. They said, Hoven knows the earth isn't flat. Why copy him? Um, um, Hoven doesn't know the earth isn't flat. And I'll debate Ken Hoven anytime, any place. He could even bring me down there. I'd love to hang out with him. Say a prayer before we eat a meal. We, That's my homie. That we might that might happen this May. Maybe we will actually. I've always wanted to do a modern day debate invades dinosaur adventure land where we could go on site for a debate. Bro, oh, that would be awesome. I'm there. So you know me. I get on airplanes and fly to debate, so it's all good. Common sense criticism. Thanks for your super chat. They said, Oh no, Nathan might leave. Oh no, terrible. I don't understand. I don't remember. Was there a point? I don't when you said No, that. I wasn't gonna leave. It's been really nice. I didn't insult Craig once, and he interrupted me and insulted me like 30 times. Athens yeah, that's because you talk a load of nonsense, chat. and you're an idiot. Athens 619, thanks for your super chat. They said, Natalie loves taking notes from Kent Hoven with SpongeBob imagination and interruptions. They are definitely... <laughs> I, can I stop reading the ones that say Nathan copies uh, <laughs> Kent Hoven? Yeah, it's, sure. Uh, I'm done with that, too. But then Let's again, it's like we've, we've heard a lot about SpongeBob, so i got to be fair. Uh, Andrew Stoll, thanks for your super chat. They said, Nathan, what is the air pressure at sea level? What is the air pressure at 12,000 meters? Of course. I'm so glad you asked. Now, because we live in a closed dynamic system... The gas is constantly moving around, and it's also different in all directions. It's inhomogeneous and anisotropic. I covered that earlier, but maybe you weren't here. Appreciate your super chat. The gas is all moving around. We well, live in a car actually, tire. What you just yeah, said is wrong because that. there is actually Hold on, layers of, of density. I'll give you a chance to. That, is someone else talking? Who is that? I promise I'll give you That's a chance, the person to, who knows what you a chance to respond, fight. But I, I do want to just let him finish, and then I promise we'll come right back to you. Thanks so much, James. So, yeah, we live in an atmosphere that's uh, constantly moving around in different in all directions. So there is what's called a gradient. But without a container, you would not have gas pressure. It's the necessary antecedent. Go ahead, Craig. What you just said is wrong because there is an average pressure uh, layers that go up. That does not mean it is different in all directions and is all mixed up. Like you say, there is a pressure gradient, a density, and that is not explained by atmosphere just being different in all directions. What you just said is dumb. You're dumb. All flat earthers are dumb. Next Another time. Thanks no, a fact. So much. Get, get it wrong. Thanks get it right. so <laughs> much for your super chat from... Appreciate it. Andrew Stroll. Stroll. Thanks for your question. They said, Nathan, what is the... Oh, yeah. I already asked that. That's embarrassing. Gabriel K. Thanks for your super chat. They said, Nathan is so hot. Too bad he's dishonest creep. Gotcha. Well, you... Someone out there thinks you're you're hot, Nathan. Hey, it's all right, James, because once she realizes I'm right, she's still going to think I'm hot. <laughs> right. It looks like it's a, it's a bald man, but, you know... To each their own sleet thanks for your super chat they said nathan how can we have roughly five pounds per square inch absolute at the top of mountains and 14.8 pounds per square inch at sea level without a container between them excellent we live in a closed dynamic system the gas pressure and the temperatures and everything and the elements are constantly moving around and different in all directions thanks for answering thanks, thanks for asking wrong gotcha thanks for that next up King Conquest, thanks for your super chat. They said, Nathan, please stop equating phenomena in microcosms on Earth to phenomena in macrocosms. Why do you think extrapolation makes your analogies correct? Uh, you're going to have to elaborate to exactly what topic you were talking about. So you're too vague. Next. Mouth breather, thanks for your super chat. They said, for Nathan, what is a Carnot engine? Uh, sorry, mouth breather, but a Carnot engine I'm not familiar with. Airplanes don't run on jet fuel. They use them to start. Um, but other than that, it's free energy. Wow, you're dumb. Like, 
Uh, that's not an insult. That is a fact. If you're one of the numpties that think that airplanes run on fucking compressed air, then your IQ is lower than like negative. Seriously, what the actual fuck? Yep, my IQ. Yeah. Have, you, have you ever taken uh, an engineering yeah, class or anything? Could you please give me the maths of how a plane works on compressed air, you fucking numpty? Now we are going to give Nathan a response just because the original question was for him, and then we got to move to the next question. Go ahead, Nathan. Yeah, of course. So, uh, you know, if you look up the specs and the statistics for the Boeing 747 or the Airbus, they're allegedly holding almost 100,000 pounds of gasoline in each wing. Now that's uh, the equivalent to eight or nine oil tankers. If you have a pool installed in your house, it'll bring roughly nine to 12,000 gallons for every truck that shows up to your house. And so they'll tell you that there's like 10 to 20 trucks of gasoline and they fill these things up in like 10 minutes and the wings are going up six feet and down six feet and, and bouncing around and, and flexing like crazy. I'm here to tell you they're hiding technology from you guys. This is why we need to stop believing in SpongeBob science and research flat earth because there's a lot of stuff we could benefit from. That's why they lie. Knowledge is power. Gotcha. That's why you have no that. power. I guess I mispronounced it. It's Carno Engine. Sorry about that. Yeah. I'm happy self isolated. Yeah. Thanks for your super chat. <laughs> is that okay? They said, thanks. All idiots are going to be carriers. Keep them distracted and off the streets. Examples of gas under pressure in a vacuum is called the sun. So I think they're a uh, lot to respond. Like you can respond to whatever part you want, Nathan. They just presuppose space and then said the sun is in space. Cool story, bro. But the sun and the moon are the same size, not because they appear the same size. They are the same size that they actually are. Cool. And Globers will say that oh, we, have, we have seasons because the Earth's tilted 66.6 degrees no and it's that. moving farther, 3 million miles farther away during perihelion. And it's 3 million miles closer during aphelion. But the temperature differences is because of a little tilt in mm -hmm. a ball Earth. That is not reality. That is SpongeBob fairy tale imagination land. If you look at the sun's path over a 12 month period, a sun analema, it's where we get the symbol for infinity from. The wheel in the sky keeps on turning. The loop in the north is not analogous to the loop in the south. It's smaller because the sun's actually making a smaller path in the summer when it goes around the North Pole. And then it speeds up in the winter to complete its 24-hour circuit in one day. Gotcha. Wow. Well, gotcha. e even, even your understanding, your understanding of the model is wrong because Next, uh, it's not the tilt. Uh, it is the amount of energy record, per square okay. mile. Record, okay. The same thing over and over No, no, no. Because what you said was wrong. Say, wrong. What you wrong, said is wrong. wrong. We've got wrong. Uh, we do the angle that the uh, energy is covering is larger. Right, let's get to the super chats. We're done talking to you, Craig. I Bye. Can, I can yeah. understand disagreeing. The only trick is like just to try to get through as many questions as possible. Yeah. Because even when I'm like skimming out the. Uh, really uh, yeah, James. I'm, I'm just pointing out that he is not even arguing against the heliocentric model. He's arguing against his dumbass version of the heliocentric model, which is not. Hey, not no one thinks hey, what he just thinks. Just too. We've got a. Hey, just hey, to keep on going. What's hey, up? James. As a Patreon of the channel, as the other debater, if uh, Craig's just going to have pictures, Photoshopped pictures of me playing over and over on his screen, can we just block his screen out or something? Because I'm here answering all the super chats. Oh, little I'm happy, to stay. I say, let's see, I'm happy let's see. to stay as long, but I mean, I know Craig. What's wrong, Snowflake? Like, I know a... Craig has like hundreds of pictures of me on his computer, and God only knows what he does with those. But... <laughs> oh, oh, I, I look at them every night when I need to cheer myself up, and that is a dumbass in the let's, world. All right, let's stay focused. Um, oh, we, we do have to, so a butter. lot of these... So 99.9% .9 of the Super Chats are, like, targeting Nathan. So we've got to to try to keep things balanced. We've never had it. <laughs> Hold on one second. We've never and, had it. And Nathan. Blessed are you when men persecute you and, and listen. And all sorts of Messiah evil. complex. What I'm, what I'm saying is your reward in heaven. I want to say that, we, Craig, just both to be fair to uh, Nathan and, and let him respond to the Super Chats, as well as because we want to get through as many as we can. Uh, if you could do us the kind favor of not interrupting 
and then we've never oh, had <laughs> i'm having so much fun james i can tell we've never had a debater play <laughs> pictures of their opponent in a clown suit during this <laughs> you okay nathan i'm sorry we've never made a rule nathan just relax it's that's how famous i am bro it's, it's kind of funny. famous <laughs> um, so it's they like so if one knew she was an idiot it's Thompson. like it is kind we've never made a rule for it so i don't really want to like I, we know now that we might have to make a rule for that <laughs> um but anyway next up ellen h thanks for your super chat they said stop hitting yourself nathan rusty p thanks for your super chat they said nathan if you say stuff that's wrong then don't complain you uh silly <laughs> thank you thank Stephen you more energy strikes again thanks for your super chat she says the only thing flat is James's butt when he wears his mom jeans. That's not true. true. James is ripped. Well, it's kind of true, but I appreciate that, Nathan. <laughs> Next up, Edward <laughs> Eric, thanks for your super chat. Says Nathan, since you yes, Mister Unite for the joke. Since you say you can't see North Star in the Southern Southern Hemisphere because of perspective, and you agree, sailors used a sexton to na navigate. How does a sexton, am I saying that right, account for flurf Sexton. Sexton, thank you. Yeah. Sexton account for flurf what? The flurf, uh, the flat earth perspective. Yeah, of course. The flat earth perspective is that the sky is a map and a clock. So if you base all your navigations oh. off the sky, which is a map and a clock, You'll end up doing pretty well and figure out where you're going. That's why they did it that way for hundreds of years. Craig said it in his opening argument, and they didn't even know about the theory of special relativity until 50, 100 years ago, or 100 years ago, whatever, but recently, okay? Not for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. That's just SpongeBob fairy tale imagination land. Gotcha. Appreciate Sexton it. Sexton doesn't work on flat earth. End of story. Next up, uh, Bartos Diagos, thanks for your super chat. They said, Nathan, this is really unhealthy. You need to stop this flat earth stuff. Greetings from the Netherlands. Um, really interesting. So they're going to say that I'm really, really unhealthy. Well, then I'm going to go ahead and share a picture of me with my shirt Dude, you're off. You're six <laughs> foot and 160 pounds. Um, Nathan is commencing. You could get snapped by a wind. Nathan is about to show a picture of himself with his shirt off. You, it's really not necessary. We you take your word for it, you're healthy. Next up, <laughs> so appreciate it. Uh, by the way, Brian Stevens, I'm so sorry. I forgot your, I'm so sorry. I, I've lost your question. If you're out there, Brian, please help me out. Sorry about that. I'll keep an eye out. Thanks for your other super chat. Stringer News 1. No, no, stop, Nathan. Oh, well, that's, that's very beautiful. No, no, no. Uh, There's a difference between malnourished and ripped. That was very beautiful, Nathan. Okay, <laughs> next up. Um, no, Six I'm, foot, 160 pounds. I was making oh you have man okay. goods, Craig. Stringer, yeah. Cool. Stringer News 1. One, I'm still more healthy than you. Stringer one. <laughs> is just, is, <laughs> now you guys are comparing your health. And Plus, your I get to uh, you know, eat. He said he's more healthy than me with his. Oh, man. definitely. You guys have definitely more healthy than you are. You guys have quite the uh, old rivalry. <laughs> Edward, Eric, thanks for your super chat. They said, Nathan, since you say you can't see the North Star in the Southern Hemisphere because of oh, got that. Sorry, Stringer News one. Thanks for your super chat. Who said, Nathan, have you actually measured absolute pressure at a a tire rim or is this all just wishful thinking my claim is you can't have pressure around a tire rim without a tire if you believe you can show me email me flat earth flyers at gmail.com i don't want to be wrong about anything i mean if you can show me a tire rim with gas pressure in it without a tire i mean i'll paypal you like 20 bucks thanks so much i really appreciate you showing me a tire rim with gas pressure and no tire there is no tire rim in that picture, Craig. You are spun no, scientifically. But it's, you've moved the goalposts, and that is pressure next to no pressure with no barrier, which breaks your it's entire flat barrier. Plate. That is a container, Craig. No, no, no. Is there a container between the vacuum and the pressure? Yes or no? If you don't breathe plasma. Is there a container between the vacuum and the pressure? Yes or no? We don't Simple yes or no. I don't care about what you breathe. I'm asking you a yes or no question. Okay. Try and focus for one second. Is there a barrier between 
the pressure and the vacuum, yes or no? You have no measurements for what's yes going on. Yes or yeah. no. All you did was show me a little light and ask me yes or no, and I'm telling you, I well, don't you can actually know get the measurements from you have this. No I told you it is a vacuum of 10 to the negative 11 tor. Oh yeah, you can tell me that, but can you? I can send it? you the I can send you the specifications of that particular tokamak uh, nuclear oh. reactor if you like. Okay, we so are going to quick move forward. I've done a poor job of keeping us on track, so I do have to push forward. Fargoth ninety two, thanks for your super chat. They said. Nathan talking about deflection. Bella Charge, thanks for your super chat, who said, we are going to let them fly because you um, do weird stuff, Nathan. End flat earth. That looks really good, by the way, Nathan. I want to know what that is. I want to buy that. Uh, this is called Rum Passion Fruit Double Killer from The Answers. I opened it because we're doing question and answers. And this is a brewery here in Richmond. And uh, this is actually made after a cocktail pirates used to make where they would soak rum, uh, have, uh, coconuts in rum. And then in, in this one, they actually include like passion fruit and guava. So they call it rum, passion fruit, double pink. It's really good, dude. Gotcha. Really? Thank you. More than I needed. But th <laughs> All right, oh, have, have <laughs> thanks for your super chat. End Flat Earth says everything Nathan Thompson said, says is logically flawed and factually incorrect. Cool. Jeff Roberts, so, thanks for your I'll super chat. They said, uh, Jeff Roberts said, careful fight the flat earth. He's tallying interruptions. 10 tallies equals one demerit. Three demerits equals one citation. Five citations equals one violation. Four violations equals one verbal warning. Keep it up. And it's a written warning. Two written warnings and equals disciplinary review. Is that from the office? I can't remember. Yeah, that might be from, from NASA, actually. I should probably I'm watch just, it. I need I to get my shield check. I'm glad you're making money every time these blowbacks say this ridiculous nonsense. I can't remember what movie or TV show that's from, but I know I've, I've heard it before. I like it. Uh, be nice. Be safe. Thanks for your super chat. They said, Nathan, please explain how seasons and tides work on your model in detail, please. Of course. I'm very happy to, but not in detail because we're limited on time. The sun and the moon, the past they make contract and expand every six months as they go around polar center. So sometimes the sun will be above your head in the northern latitudes below the Tropic of Cancer. Sometimes the sun will be above your head in the southern latitudes above the Tropic of Capricorn. So it just depends what time of the year it is and where you are because the wheel in the sky keeps on turning. And water, especially salt water, uh, look into its effects uh, it is diamagnetic and the sun and moon are not what we've been told at all whatsoever. So that's actually why we experience four tidal movements is not because the moon's on the other side of earth, pulling all the water into like an egg shaped gravitational tide, um, morphing the earth into like an oblong egg or something. That's just goofy, non-repeatable, non-observable science, action at a distance, spooky, Cult of bumpy particles, sorcery, imagination, SpongeBob fairy tale land. Cool. Science is sorcery. Um, yeah. Magic was his answer there, guys, just in case you were confused. Next up, David Keller, thanks for your super chat. They said, Q question Globe Earth has four layers the crust, mantle, inner core, and outer core. But on a flat Earth model, how many layers does the flat Earth have? Deepest hole dog is eight miles so i'm gonna go ahead craig put up that i'm a dumbass and then put arrows pointing towards my screen so i'm gonna put another insult down because all the oh, how'd that get there? all the shape shifting globe monkeys have is insults and interruptions and they are scientifically illiterate next up <laughs> appreciate your super chat from edward eric says Fight the flat earth. Please educate Nathan that eight to the eight miles squared is not eight inches per mile squared is nonsense. I mean, technically it's nearly accurate for a certain distance, but eight inches per mile squared is a parabola, not a circle. The actual formula to calculate the hidden drop that you should see is um, H equals one time R times one minus cos A. Uh, and that's accurate for any distance. Uh, so, yeah, the eight inches per mile squared is 
a, a very bad approximation. Gotcha. Next up. Appreciate your super chat from Kent Hoven Salmate says, does Hoven Wait, know- Wait, can, can I respond to that, James? Yes. Nah, you've said enough. At, at how, how, at what distance is eight inches per mile squared? Not accurate, Craig. Well, it's not accurate for any distance. It's a rough approximation. Okay, and at what distance is it way off, Craig? Um, pretty far, but it's never accurate. It's okay. an approximation. So it's- Do you, do you know what the word approximation means? So guys, I have all the math for not just Pythagorean theorem, but Sajida and AutoCAD. If you plug in a ball 24,901 miles around, there will be a vertical drop. And this is not me making it up. You can look at the earth curve calculators on the globe. Did they use the one that I said, actually. All the good ones anyway. Okay, so at one mile, how much curve would there be? About eight inches, Craig? Approximately. That's what the word approximately means. Excellent. Are we having issues with the word approximately? Excellent. So approximately. Are, are, is, are, are we having a problem squared. with that, the word? Does does approximately, Nathan, does approximately mean exactly? Yes Craig or no? Craig said it's not accurate. I asked him what it is, and he told me exactly what I told him it is. That's hilarious, yeah. guys. But the, 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 the equation that I gave is ah. accurate for any distance. Got a lot more questions. Ken Hoven cellmate, thanks for your super chat. They said, does Hoven know that Nathan is nicking his gimmick? Rusty P, thanks for your super chat. Says, damn, person who is intelligent versus person who is knocking out SpongeBob. Let's see. Got some critics out there. Point and laugh, thanks for your super chat. They said, Natalie is hysterical like a three-year-old child. Nathan. You can respond if you want to to any of these. Otherwise, I'm just going to cruise through them. <laughs> but I got a fake ID, though. Thank you. Yeah, you should probably keep the ID. You need it when you go to court. B Bitwise79, thanks for your super chat. They said, the SpongeBob shtick is lame. Leave that junk to Kent Hovind. Rangerman9404, thanks for your super chat. They said, perspective. The Flurf's, quote, get out of science free card, unquote. Eric, or Edward Eric, thanks for your super chat. says, Nathan, define inhomogeneous isotropic yeah inhomogeneous and anisotropic means not the same and constantly moving around so it's different in all directions the atmosphere as far as pressure and temperature and that is changing minute to minute hour to hour because we live in a closed dynamic system not a tilted cartoon ball in space Gotcha. That's Bob. Thanks for that. Let's see. Dennis D, thanks for your super chat, who said, Natalie, use hammer to break ice wall and drain ocean. Confused. Andrew Stoll, thanks for your super chat, who said, Nathan, why is air pressure 1013.25 M bar at sea level and 10.902 M bar at 30,480 meters? Please explain how this works in a dome or really large tire. Yeah, of course. So because we have a sun and a moon that heat and cool things, the gas is inhomogeneous and anisotropic and constantly moving around in all directions. Next Wait, question. The moon cools, but did you just say the moon cools things? Yes, of course. Yeah, moon yeah, yeah. But but you also said the second law of thermodynamics. The second law of thermodynamics says that you cannot have a cold light. No, it does not say that. Yes, yes, it most definitely does, unless you can literally reverse oh, entropy God. of light. Because light is energy, therefore it cannot be cold, because that would be negative. You cannot claim the second law of thermodynamics defies our atmosphere, and then say the moon gives cold light, because that's dumb as fuck. Do you know who Ken Wheeler is, Craig? Yes, what's your point? They call him Mr. Magnetism. He's got almost 200,000 subscribers on YouTube. He used a FLIR which picks up a heat signature and determined as a globe head that moonlight is in fact cold. I've also done this. Uh, no, 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 that's oh, called please radiative don't cooling. Me, Craig, you got some wrong, so I'm going to tell you. You've got radiative me. cooling. No, we don't need let's, to talk to you anymore. The part where I talk to you let's back and forth when you interrupt me is over. Radiative cooling, over. Nathan. Right. Radiative you only cooling, get to interrupt me ahead, 19 Nathan. times during this debate tonight, Craig. We have moved on to the question and answer portion. And so far, and I've been keeping track of this, 
All the questions count, are for me, not for you, Craig. Next so pipe up. down. Next up. Pipe down. Yeah, um, King just Conquest. to say, you know, Nathan, King I've been Conquest. doing a month long Hold moon on a second. All right. temperature King Conquest. experiment. Thanks for your super chat. They said, Nathan, all of the South Pole sees the same stars. All of the North Pole sees the same stars. If Antarctica goes around the flat Earth, how do they see the same stars but not the North Star in the middle? That yep. guy is proving the Earth is not a spinning ball in space by his question because... He's not your moron. All right, we have to give Nathan an actual chance to respond. Otherwise, it's not... So oh, sorry. I was talking to myself there. I apologize. It's all right, Craig. I I'm not apologizing to you. You're a moron. I forgive you. Oh, another insult. Okay, Thank we've you. got it. Go ahead, Nathan. I just can't. I mean, James, what is the point of this? I mean, is he adding any value to the show or is he like a little yeah. kid chiming in with a peanut gallery? As a moderator, I would think you would want to add a little more value to your audience. Than oh, they're getting plenty of value, Nathan. If you'd like, watching you be an idiot. If you'd like to respond to that last one, you can. Otherwise, we'll go to the next question. Yeah, I was interrupted so many times and insulted now for your no chance. reason. What was the question? They said, oh my god all of the south pole sees the same stars all the north pole sees the same stars if antarctica goes around the flat earth how do they see the same stars but not the north star in the middle excellent they are starting to figure it out it looks like my science hammer is getting into the globehead spongebob imagination because we do see the same stars day after day year after year the earth is not a ball in space now if we were on a ball in space Let's pretend that my fruity, delicious sour is the sun. Now, if we're on a ball in space, what at this time of the year, you would look this direction and that would be all the stars, right? But then as you orbit the super delicious sour, you get six months later, you'd end up over here and you'd be looking that direction off into space. So when a globe head says, why do we see all the same stars? You should ask them, you're right. Don't you think we live on a ball in space? SpongeBob? Gotcha. Right. Uh, Thanks for that. Can, can I just quickly tell him why he's wrong? Is, if it's like, come, come on, fast. it's only fair to the, it's All only right. fair. Yeah, yeah. If so we, if we um, don't get we, your we, super chat, folks, it's yeah, fight's we, fault. We, okay. We do see different stars throughout the year. So um, you're, you're wrong once again. Uh, there is six months where you can't see some because you are right there on the other side. You just proved the heliocentric model. But all the stars that we see in the night sky are relatively close to us in the galactic sense and traveling around the center of the galaxy where, with us. So you are not going to see much movement and you're an idiot no fact fact next up thanks for your super chat let's see appreciate it from show your sources they say someone in the north and someone in the south opposite sides of the earth next up king conquest thanks for your super chat they said i know polaris is in the north sky even in the daytime Yes, but you can't see it. So there would be no observation claiming someone at night and someone in the day can both see Polaris. You can assume it's there, but you can't see it. So when Craig goes, two people are looking at the same stars. No, they're not, because it would yes, be daytime on the other side of the Earth. Craig believes in SpongeBob imagination. Go ahead, Craig, interrupt Are you me. just going to st- you just going to steal um, like Hogan's entire bit? You I can't mean, steal what Ken Hoven gives freely, and if I have to be... Now, you've fired, literally stolen his bit. You've literally stolen his You don't have any originality about you. So much. Globers, Next then I will, uh, Greg. What are you going to do with all the kids in school? It's amazing. Na- you're going to have Na- so much uh, Let's time. see. Brad Dubay, thanks for your super chat. They said, Nathan, why does light care about visibility from above, in parentheses, from the vertical, at any distance versus, say, light from the horizontal to, an example, the sunset? You have no critical thinking skills. Zero. Cool story. Thanks for that. No doubt. Thanks for your super chat. They say, shut up, Natalie. <laughs> <laughs> Space Monkey 77. Thanks for your super chat. They say, Neil deGrasse Tyson also says a lot more to support physics. Why don't you consider that, Natalie? Uh, what? physics does he say to support because he tells you that earth rotates under balls if you believe that you should take a look at a hot air balloon or a drone or a helicopter or smoke or insects or take a look at someone who just teed off a golf 
if someone, if the earth's moving under a football, which travels for a very short period of time, why wouldn't it move under a golf tee, which has a lot more hang time than a football throw? I mean, this is just backwards reality, upside down, imagination land, science. Next so you up. still don't know what planet the Skeptic Wiz, forces. thanks for your Good super job. chat. They said, fight the flat earth already lost, case closed true yes. that i agree with that person d i yeah, i'm can totally lost like... uh, i mean objective reality says exactly the opposite it's hard to lose a debate when your opponent doesn't answer a single one of your fucking questions D-I- questions are evidence craig if you had some evidence then I oh i presented that. plenty of evidence you just don't understand any of it i went through all of them point D-I- by point D-I- and you were you were wrong about all of it now we have we're going to give fight the last word on this one just because super chat was for him. What was that? So what was the super chat? <laughs> it was just the, it was the, oh, just oh, the, one. Being, the one being nasty to me. Oh, okay. Uh, I, yeah. Yeah. I mean, flat earthers are going to be flat earthers and all flat earthers are fucking idiots. D I T R H. Wait, can I respond to that? Oh, no, let's move on. The, let's move on. Flat earthers will be flat earthers. Let's let's move on. But globe earthers will also be flat earthers. Eight shower heads. I was a super chat. Globe earther too. Was originally for him. D I T R H. Thanks for your super chat. They said the stars rotate to a position close to the viewer while Polaris remains at a fixed position. True that. Polaris means pole star. We are not blasting through space. Earth is stationary. Seems like my hammer is getting through to the SpongeBob fans. Thanks very much. Ranger Man 9404. Thanks for your super chat. They said, even SpongeBob is smarter than Natalie. Bodie McBoatface, thanks for your super chat. They said, Natalie, I live in New Zealand and absolutely see stars rotate opposite direction to the Northern Hemisphere. Well, in the Northern Hemisphere, they move east to west. And Craig said, in the Southern Hemisphere, they move east to west. So they don't move in opposite directions. You are... They rotate in opposite directions, you absolute moron. Thank you very much. Next up, Dennis D. thinks you're... He doesn't even understand rotation, James. It's it's incredible he can function as a human. Dennis D. thinks your super chat (laughs) says, all schools are closed. True. Stringer News 1 thinks your super chat. They said, pigeon chess... Uh, Michael Dresden in all caps, <laughs> even when it's a super chat. Uh, thanks for your super chat. They said uh, Nathan Thompson destroyed Fight the Flat Earth tonight. Uh, I mean, he made me lose a couple of brain cells with his dumb, but he didn't answer a single one of my questions. Therefore, he lost the debate. C4, <laughs> Nathan, Nathan doesn't even care anymore. C4, thanks for your super chat. He's too dumb to understand. They said, modern day debate, why do you support a liar like Nathan? There are so many amazing people in your chat that deserve your support over Nathan's. I don't under- understand. Um, There's a lot of people complaining about the fact that he's a moderator. They don't think that um, someone as detestable as him should be a moderator. Oh, um, yeah. I, and the fact that he's wearing a Building 7 shirt is uh, extremely disrespectful and horrible, and that kind of behavior should not be supported. Gotcha. Let's see. I, I, shirt, I haven't Craig. examined all of Nathan's personal life. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, I can try to look into more of Nathan's personal life. And uh, in addition to the nude photo he showed us tonight, as much as I can. So... Bodie McBoatface, thanks for your uh, super chat, says, SpongeBob's life matters. Natalie, you monster. Thank you for that. Eric, Edward Eric, thanks for your super chat, said, Nathan, why doesn't perspective make planes disappear behind the horizon or any other objects in the sky? Planes do disappear behind the horizon. What are you talking about, SpongeBob? Oh, they disappear behind the horizon. That means the Earth's a globe. Horizon is not actual. It's apparent, and I'm not. Um, apparent afraid. means there's a physical of something. I'm not afraid to talk to you anymore. Apparent means I'll there's a physical of something, numpty boy. Thanks for your super chat. The Athens six one nine says constantly saying perspective doesn't help your position. You are also saying parallel lines intersect. Love your Dunning Kruger. Yeah. Glad. Then- so, like, and, uh, and, hey James, he is right that all these super chats are for him, but it's because more more and more people want to see him be stupid. 
And Another Flat Earth, thanks for your okay. super chat. They said, to all the zombies who think Natalie is winning, you're worse off than him. Movie Theory responds <laughs> by saying, fight the Flat Earth is getting spanked, in all caps. Craig lost. Mm -hmm. Yeah, total, total fail. Oh, wait, no, that's an opposite world. Nathan's a moron and couldn't answer a single one of my questions. Stop the spanking. Okay, MacGyver Institute of Ninja Technology. Thank you for your super chat. <laughs> um, it's perspective. Proved it on my channel. Sometimes you gotta sp spank the SpongeBob and let him know that it's not real science. Dude, SpongeBob. you should really keep your fetishes to yourself. Like <laughs> that's not healthy. Thank you. Not healthy. <laughs> Thank you, Dennis D, for your super chat. They said any educated person knows fight the flat Earth scored victory. The banner. Oh, uh, yeah, James, it's not hard to win a debate against a flat earther. You just have to, you know, not be a complete and utter fucking moron. The banner, oh, excellent. Thanks so much. The banner of Hamuro Hamura Akimai. Oh, that's embarrassing. It says fight the flat Earth. Continue to push the boulder up the hill on his dead debate. On this dead debate called flat Earth. Yeah, there is no debate. It's objectively not flat. The Earth is a globe. We are in space. There is no evidence for the flat Earth. It's the simple fact. These aren't debates. These are simply me allowing these stupid to parade themselves for everybody to see. And boy, is he fucking stupid. Roxana, thanks oh. for your super chat. Yeah, I, I just realized, you know, it's funny that even though Craig was playing the video, Nathan, when you hold up SpongeBob and like <laughs> pretend to move it and stuff while Craig is talking, it's kind of the same idea. We've never had... This is the first night where both of you coincidentally brought visual props <laughs> to hold up while the other person was talking. It's just interesting. So it made it added to the intensity. Um, movie theory. Let's see. We get that one. Raksada, thanks for your super chat. They said, is Nathan even listening or just playing with toys? Movie theory. Thanks for your super, super chat. They said, Nathan destroyed Fight the Flat Earth. Fight the Flat Earth is ignorant in all caps. Um, ignorant must not mean what they think it means. Thanks very much. Rivette, thanks for your super chat. They said 7-Eleven is Nathan Thompson's preferred age range. Okay. Gosh. That one snuck through. P. Barnes, thanks for your super chat. <laughs> He's not a pervert. Okay. P. Barnes, thanks for your super chat. They said, Nathan, reconsider your use of Kent Hovind's shtick. He understands that the earth is flat. Michael wow. Barrett, thanks for your super chat. They said, super chat equals truth. Crayons, dinner's on me, Nathan. I'm confused. Aurora, thanks for your super chat. They said force of gravity works in a an X, Y, and Z axis of space. Mass in space, like solids and waters, are attached, are, are attracted into a center. Thus, a spherical body is formed. Yeah, hydrostatics actually say that the lowest energy state of water will make it form a sphere. But Nathan wouldn't get it. It's it's science. Thanks so much. No doubt. Thanks for your super chat. They said SpongeBob forever. Dennis D, thanks for your super chat. They said Nathan lost. Only a fool thinks the earth, earth is flat. The Chad. Question for Natalie. Can you graph uh, eight, inch or eight inches meters squared? Does the shape of the graph make the same shape of our globe model Earth? No. The eight inches per mile squared is accurate up to a thousand miles. Nobody's doing thousand mile sight distance observations. So, so not you accurate at all. It's an approximation. Okay, Stop lying to everybody. At a, at a thousand miles, Craig, how much is it off by? It's an approximation, Nathan. Is it off by even a foot, Craig, or is it less than a foot? What does the word approximation mean, Nathan? Stop saying it's accurate when it's an approximation Can and then stop trying to straw man me. Can you answer a question? No, right? no, because we're not here doing the back and forth. You made that quite fucking clear. All right. What is the next question, James? Gotcha. Thanks so much. Next up, appreciate nice. your super chat from JL Warren said, strange that Nathan would use Hoven's shtick, but Hoven does not believe the earth is flat. Believe. You hear it, James? You hear that? The B word again. But he doesn't believe. It's all cult rhetoric. Because when you are a SpongeBob, you can't talk about science. You have to talk about religion. 
Yeah, that's all you have. A book says a thing. I haven't said anything about the Bible. My, all my arguments. You've said a whole bunch of shit about the Rusty Bible. Don't P. lie. Rusty Can you not just stop Rusty lying for once? DP, thanks for your yeah. super chat. They said, James, if someone just goes over the points of the opponent and not give an answer, be a criminal. Please kick them from debates. Uh, I don't know. We're pretty laissez-faire. Love it or hate it. I don't mind. You can give. You can throw your poop at me. I don't mind. Uh, next up, JL Warren said, when will you admit that you were exposed as a Poe in Dallas, Nathan? Definitely not a Poe. I mean... I no, he generally is. Genuinely is that stupid. It's true, guys. That's another insult from Craig. We're at 20. You actually beat out your interruptions with your insults now because of the question... Oh, cool. Can I get another one in, you fucking idiot? You just couldn't contain yourself, Craig. No, right? no. It's, it's hard when you're around someone who harasses yes, children and is I constantly think... wrong about everything they fucking say. Next up, gotta fly through these. Thanks for your super chat. Wits. Wits it gets it. 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 Fight the flat earth. Can you attribute a property to a privation? He knows the answer. I will tell him when he gets off his fucking pussy ass and debates me. (laughs) (laughs) Pretty frank answer. GS Geology says SpongeBob equals I don't know from Nathan. Josiah Hansen. Thanks for your super chat. They said, when you copy Hoven's dumbest actions, General Ballsack, <laughs> thanks for your super chat. That's a real name. Why have no flat earthers attempted to seek the edge of the earth to prove incontrovertibly that the earth is flat? That's an, that's an interesting question. What do you got, Nathan? They think that finding an edge proves it's flat. How funny is that, James? So... Uh, what proves that the earth is flat is that it is flat, not that it has an edge. That person is scientifically illiterate. Got any measurements of flatness there, Nathan? I'm not talking to you, Craig. No, no, you don't. You don't, do you? Yeah, I've got I measurements of curvature, though. Craig. It's funny that, that there's no measurements of flatness, but I've got measurements of curvature. It's amazing. Yeah, it's hilarious. Can we move yeah. on? Gotcha. Thanks so much, very much for your super chat from... Cheese Mundo says, thanks, Bob. Stringer News 1, thanks for your super chat, who says, Nathan, who appointed thanks, you spokesman for, quote, science? Roxada, thanks for your super chat. They said, why does Nathan have so many kid toys? Aurora, thanks for your super chat. Said, Nathan, conspiratorial thinking can make one delusional. Michael Barrett, thanks for your super chat. They said, SpongeBob, quote, help me, I was just at school. <laughs> <laughs> Ranger Man 9404 says he uses SpongeBob. Let's see. Um, let's see. K Doc, thanks for your super chat. They said Nathan knows science. Qu- uh, question mark. He doesn't have scientific paper on his name, nor higher level scientific degree. Any papers on Thompson Reuter Science Journal? Tra- T N A Vesak. Thanks for your super chat. They said for Nathan, does Nathan realize that Kent Hovind, another charlatan, would be embarrassed to see him steal his SpongeBob prop? When a fraud thinks another fraud is ridiculous, does not bode well for you, Nathan. Tinker Phil, thanks for your super chat. He said, Nathan, why do you think that people who actually make a real variable? <laughs> I'm just laughing at how many of these angry super chats there are for nathan okay nathan why do you think that people who actually make real variable contributions to science not understand science as well as you do because i've tested the earth and they're wrong (laughs) you could test it yourself large bodies of water do not curve you need to be in a container and when they're at rest they are level and horizontal cool got any measurements of flatness Trainer. Thanks for your any me- any chat. measurements of flatness. No, didn't think so. Appreciate your super chat from Dennis D. Who says, "What will Nathan Thompson say about helium balloons or gravity?" Magic. Uh, you guys assert that gravity pulls all things down. So, what would you say about helium balloons? They go up. Okay, what would we say about helium balloons? Um, Well, that's because the air, which has more mass, is being pulled down with more force, which creates a force in the opposite direction. Buoyancy cannot exist without gravity. The equation for buoyancy is the buoyant force equals rho for density times g for the gravitational acceleration times v. 
Could you have a balloon with pressure inside without the rubber container, Craig? Probably not, no, but Probably there's not. not a force there. There's a force in the uh, thing that I showed you, an emergent force, yep. just like so gravity's an emergent force. I already stated that when you put gas in a vacuum, it moves in all directions. Oh, so funny, when I showed you the image of gas in the vacuum not moving in all directions, that debunked what you said. When you put gas in a vacuum, it doesn't go down. It gotta goes move fast, gotta move fast. Greg. Next, I'm not moving in all directions. AJ Ravenwolf, thanks for your super chat. Who said, Nathan, you're delusional. <laughs> so, so these are just the most explicit insults. Sir, I mean, they're right. Sir, thanks for your super chat. Who said, How many lies will Nathan tell? He knows exactly who astronomy live is. Live, astronomy live, yes. Astronomy, astronomy live, live is the other person oh. that destroyed uh, JM with his footage. And boy, Nathan, do I have a story about all that. Yeah. Breton oh. Bowl, thanks for your super chat. They said, can Nathan explain what the inertial frame of reference is? Yeah, it's stationary. That's why the atmosphere doesn't move separately from the Earth. Next no, question. no, 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 no. What is the inertial frame of reference? No, 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 no. no. Not talking to you. Give... Not... You didn't answer, and... just so you know. Go ahead and uh, let's see. Wits it gets it. Thanks for your super chat. Who said, quite the tight shirt just begs the question. I don't get it. Quite the tight shirt. He's changed it from fight the tight shirt. I mean, yeah. fight the tight shirt is probably one of the cleverest things I've heard a flat earther say. And I think it's fucking awesome. I am fight the tight shirt. Gotcha. Thanks for that. Ranger man, nine, four, zero, four. Thanks for your super chat. They said, how can I not touch my face and yet face palm? Eric Veer Thaler, 92 question for Nathan and fight the flat earth. What would change your mind? We'll give you each 30 seconds. Uh, okay, what would change my mind is some evidence of a flat Earth. Simple. There isn't any evidence that the Earth is flat. There's no measurements of flatness. There is no um, scientific experiment that can demonstrate that the Earth is not moving. Every time you try to measure movement, you get movement. There is no evidence. The only thing that would change my mind is if there was any evidence, but there isn't. Gotcha. Thank you very much. And next up, oh, Nathan, if you want to respond, we'll give you 30 <laughs> seconds. Yeah, sure. He asked what would change my mind. I already have changed my mind. I used to be a Glover and now I'm a flat earther. It's a progression. You'll figure it out. Gotcha. We did the question again. Let's see. Wow. Um, Tremera B, thanks for your super chat, who says, Nathan Thompson on the internet, you can be anything you want. Why do you chose? Why did you choose to be stupid? Um, I didn't choose flat earth. Flat earth chose me. Thank you very much. Thank you. You could choose a stupid Thomas B, thanks for your super chat. They said, fight the flat earth. Can you show evidence of abuse in Nathan's research group? Can I show evidence of abuse in Nathan's research group? Yeah, I don't know. I, I didn't say there was any abuse in Nathan's research group, but it's a massive echo chamber, not a research group that doesn't like questions and ban <laughs> you when you start asking questions about gravity. Can I respond to that? What do you got, Nathan? Yeah, he says it's an echo chamber. Well, you're right, Craig, because when all you do is interrupt people and insult them, that sounds like a massive echo chamber. <laughs> I don't think you know what an echo chamber is. Wow. Oh, my God. Like, how do you not swallow your tongue at night? Another inch. Oh, excellent. Thank you so much. No, it was a question. I am genuinely concerned for your safety when you go outside without a helmet on. Next up, thanks for your super chat. We have... Amari Kitta Decoro, thanks for your super chat. They said, question for Nathan. We read we read your flyer. Where did you get the Photoshop photo of Buzz Aldrin that is printed on your flyer? Um, I don't know what you're talking about. Photoshop picture of Buzz Aldrin that you... Let me see. Water is a natural level, airplane level flight. Science says it's stationary. Or is Ryzen's always eye level? We see too far. I don't see Buzz on here, but if you want to email me at flatearthflyers at gmail.com, I just try to focus on the science. Hey, Nathan, why does your flyer contain okay. outright lies that you know about? Next up, let's see. Roxada, thanks for your super chat. They said, question for no, Nathan. No why do you have kids' toys? Um, this is IQ level. I'm a Toys R Us kid. I don't want to grow up. Appreciate that. Matt, Matt, it's thanks clear. for your super chat. He said, Hey, Craig, how do you like your new chew toy? Oh, it's fun. Um, although this is the last time I interact with him because th this debate was literally so that I could parade his stupidity to the world. And I've done a pretty good job of that. He 
said some horrifically stupid things in this debate. So um, from now on, I'm not going to speak to the child harassing piece of crap. I am instead just going to make lots of videos pointing out his stupid. And any time he flat smacks someone, I will send them this debate. Gotcha. Nice. Uh, I... Gosh. Do we... Let's see. Give me one second. I lost my spot. That's funny. Um, I think we got that one. Got that one. We're almost there. Matt Metz. Oh, we got that one. Josh Griffin, thanks for your super chat. They said, Nathan, I'd like to get an answer to the question Fight the Flat Earth asked before the Q&A started, specifically about the ring laser gyroscope, if I'm saying that right. Gyroscope. Yes, light moves on a flat Earth. We observe light move. Anyone who thinks a ring laser gyroscope proves that the Earth moves is scientifically illiterate. Thanks for uh, that. Well, the Next Sagniac up, effect actually completely back. disagrees with you. Dominic Dines Thuber, thanks for your super chat. They said, for Nathan, why are you parroting Kent Hovind? Because he's a moron. It's all right to be a copycat as long as you copy the right cat. Next up, MacGyver Institute of Ninja Technology. Thanks for your super chat. They said, fight the flat earth says, say, quote, further without saying fervor. No, I've got an accent. Deal with it. Nice. I was raised in Bristol, which is literally the bumpkin country of England. I can't help the fact that I sound like a farmer. Get off my land, right? <laughs> Next up, Xantar2482 says, Nathan, how was your relationship with your father? I don't know what that means. Excellent. My parents call me all the time and support my activism, and they think it's great what I'm doing. I've been full-time flat earth for almost two years now. Praise God. Gotcha. Thanks very much. Willie Merck, thanks for your super chat. They said, Nathan, set up a GoFundMe to Antarctica. I will donate. That's cool. I have. It's paypal.me forward slash keep it flat. Go ahead. Up. Send me all your money. Flat Earth Data says, share your pain, Craig. Welcome to Flat Earth. Oh, Flat Earth Data. This is the coward that um, said he was going to debate me and then ran away. Doesn't understand what a pendulous vein is and uh, doesn't understand the fallacy of begging the question. Um, so yeah um hey flat earth data if you don't want to debate me on my channel james is always willing to host a good debate but we all know that you're a little bitch so it's cool trimira b thanks for your super chat they said covid19 victims are increasing in numbers why is nathan's iq Fuck level yes uh why is nathan's iq level dropping more insults that's kind of garbage Come here. next up no, no they're, they're asking a, a question it seems like you're getting dumber why is that GS Geology asks, as a geologist, geologist, I can say you were unworthy to invoke the USGS. We all use a globe earth base for our maps. Look up a geoid. Zachary Morris, thanks for your super chat. Nathan Thompson stole the entire SpongeBob bit from Kent Hovind. True that. Razark9, flat tarred tear drinker, thanks for your super chat. They said, I was not talking about your Facebook group. Why do you remove people who disagree with you on your channel, even when they're nice? Pioneer of truth, LOL. I don't remove nice people. If someone's not a troll, I'll give you all the time in the world. Got so, you. I have evidence that says otherwise. Rangerman9404, thanks for your super chat. They said, Nathan gives flurf cooties. Stephen Walker, thanks for your super chat. They said, why can we see satellites with the naked eye if they're just cartoons? Nathan? Was that a question? Yes, they said, why can't we see satellites with the naked eye if they're just cartoons? Yeah, because satellites aren't real. That's why you can't... See, well, is he saying we can see them with the naked eye? Well, then he's assuming that a light in the sky is a satellite and that's not the case sorry you could be seeing a high altitude military airplane you could just be seeing a commercial jet flight you don't know that's going over your head there's a lot of things that could be good but to assume that metal boxes fall in a circle around a pear earth is spongebob imagination it's not reality when no, you it's science it goes down it does not fall in a circle Next Nathan, up. Right, what happens if you throw a ball to your right? Does it fall straight down or does it fall in an arc? Next up. Next. You don't know the answer. Next up, thanks for your super chat from 
our dear friend Helios575 who asked, Nathan, how much would you feel uh, on a merry-go-round doing one rotation every 24 hours? Yeah, of course, but you're not on a merry-go-round. You're on a ball 24,901 miles around. My argument is not that we can't feel it, which we don't. Only people who think Earth move are drunk, but we can't measure it either. The only thing moving is the lights in the sky. The wheel in the sky keeps on turning. We all live in a yellow submarine. He a lives 15 in a degree island. per hour drift. Pineapple under the sea. See, the, do- the most popular dome in the world is the dome of the rock, and it's gold because we live in a pineapple under the sea. Steve. And- yep, go ahead. Thanks for your super chat, Steve. Wow, 758 says, Nathan, fight the flat <laughs> earth. I don't get it. Northern Shire, thanks for your super <laughs> chat. They said, Nathan, I can see Saturn with my P900. It's round. Yeah, that's great. And so are pizzas and coins and frisbees. They're also round. You need to learn shapes. Hey, you are geometrically illiterate. Hey, Nathan, round. what's the one you fit in geometry? Yeah, this is round globe head. Hey, Nathan, what's the what's non you fit in geometry? Ranger man, just because we have to keep moving. No, let's see. Uh, Sorry, he doesn't Rosenberg, know. Rosenberg, thanks to your super chat. They said, what, what is the material reason for people to shroud that the world is flat? It seems like it would be insanely expensive to obscure this. Why, to why, the hide god nonsense. Well, of course, if the devil can convince you that Genesis 1 is not real, then you won't read Genesis 2 or lamentations or obadiah or matthew or luke or john you're going to think it's all fairy tale nonsense and that is god's word so if they can convince you god's word is not true well you'll believe the word of man instead so when man tells you we went to heaven in a rocket you're going to go oh my gosh take my money that's such a beautiful story Gotcha. Thanks very much. Appreciate that. Super chat uh, from Astronomy wow. Live says, thanks for that, by the way. They said, I've taken real photos of satellites in space, including GPS. I've even measured their altitude and velocity. Can you no, explain, you can't count that high. Can you explain, Nathan? So this guy has real pictures of satellites in space, and I can't find any of them on Google. Yeah, he does. He sends quite a lot, actually. Hey, um, Astronomy Live, Astronomy Live, send me one of the... Nathan, hold on. Astronomy Live, send me one of the pictures right now, and I'll put it up for Nathan to see. Next up, Area 85 Restorations. Thanks for your super chat. They said, I'm an engineer working for Blue Origin. Can Nathan explain how I am being, quote, uh, how I am, quote, being fooled, or am I part of the conspiracy, Nathan? Sorry, was that a question? Yes. They Sorry, there's an, there's an engineer from, out all night. I just had there, to take care of my dog there for a second. There's an engineer from Blue Origin, and he wants to know how he is being fooled. Yeah, it's because you're gullible. Go out, test Earth yourself. You realize it's flat and stationary. So the, the, the literal up. rocket engineer go. is the gullible one. You've got to go. Wow. Flurfs are idiots. Thanks for your super chat. They said, hey, Nathan, how many lead they paint are. chips do you consume on a daily basis? I don't eat lead paint chips. I'm plant-based. I've been eating vegan for five years. Gotcha. Yeah, but you were fed lead, lead, lead paint as a child, right? Thank you very Seriously. much. Eric yep. Veerthaler oh. <laughs> got that question already about R and Raw. Willie Merck, thanks for your super chat. They said Nathan Thompson, a U two would have to be the size of a seven forty seven to with massive antennas to transmit anything from ninety thousand feet in the air. Let's debate that. Uh, I do you hear what this globehead's saying, James? He's saying. Well, they would have to have a massive antenna from 90,000 feet in the air. So what they do is they send satellites in space. <laughs> hey, hey, Nathan, why do planes have their GPS receivers on the top? SpongeBob, let me hear, bro. If it's Nathan, too hard, if it's too hard Nathan, to do them from 90,000 feet, then they're not doing it from space, Globehead. Gotta move Nathan, her, her, Nathan her. why do planes Elk, have GPS receivers Elk, on the top? Uh, Next Elk, question. Elk, uh, you don't know. Ba- cool. Balin, sixty-nine. Thanks for your super chat. They said, Nathan, Nathan, explain how we as three-dimensional beings exist on a two-dimensional flat Earth plate. Earth is not two-dimensional. That's a stupid question. Next, Area eighty-five restorations. Thanks for your super chat. They said, even Kent thinks flat Earthers are morons. Why is Nathan idolizing him? 
who cares his argument from popularity oh this person thinks i'm right so let me ask nathan about it wow you are scientifically illiterate jr thanks for your super chat they said yes, rainbows so are the same arch no matter the perspective but a mirror is needed indoors to create the same effect what is the mirror outside creating a consistent arch or why is the mirror outside creating a consistent arch that isn't present indoors Nathan. That was for me? Yes. Yeah, pay attention. These are so boring. So you want to know about an arch indoors? What what does that have to do with the shape of the earth? What what was it, James? So they said rainbows are the same arch no matter the perspective, but a mirror is needed indoors to create the same effect. What is the mirror outside creating a consistent arch that isn't present indoors? Okay, so a rainbow is happening because we live under a dome. That's why it's a dome what shape. What the fuck? Did you just say that? Like, you, you realize you're live to like a thousand people and you just said that. Another insult, interruption from Chris. No, I was just asking a serious Next question. Up. You, you up. realize that we're still live. And yeah, you're so saying stupid someone things. Someone just super chatted a question. I was giving wow. him an Gotta answer, Craig. Super yeah, fast. Oh, man, I have to even explain the joke. We've been going three hours. We've got to move fast. Josh Griffin, thanks for your super chat. They said, Craig, what was the funniest thing Nathan said tonight? There you go. A question for Craig. Oh, my God. What's the funniest thing Nathan said tonight? Um, there's so much to choose from, but what he just said then was pretty dumb. Um, uh, trust me, there's going to I might actually do the top 10 dumbest things that Nathan said in this debate video. Hmm. Um, it's going to be hard because, wow, there was there was a lot. Jackalope Herdmaster, thanks for your super chat. They said Nathan's too dense to know how badly he lost. Eric Vierthaler, 92, says, question for both. What would uh, – we already got that one. What would change your minds? Steve, 1758, says, for both, the X-15 in 1963 set the altitude record at 67 miles. True or false? Explain. I don't know. I wasn't there. Cool story, bro. You can answer, too, if you'd like, Craig. Science I'm just going to shake my head. I think that's all the answer needed. Science is observable and repeatable. So when you tell a story. Right, Polly want a cracker. Polly want a cracker. Philip, thanks for your super chat. They said, Nathan, are we ever going to see a real picture of the flat earth from space? Space is fake. So no, you're never going to see any real pictures from space. That's why if you Google satellites in space or the pictures of the South Pole from space or pictures of the solar system from space, they are all cartoons like SpongeBob, who lives in a pineapple under the sea. Gotcha. Thanks for that. Nathan? Well, here, here's, here's a picture of a satellite in space taken by Astronomy Live. Next up, appreciate your super chat from dearest friend Northern Shire, who says, Craig, do you believe building seven collapsed from fire? I'm not going to dignify that completely disrespectful question with an answer. Gotcha. Point and laugh. Thanks for your super chat. They said, Craig, please tell us all the funny things Nathan said. You can say one because we've got to keep moving. Um, well, the, the, he thinks the second law of thermodynamics is about gas. That was pretty funny. Traveler X, thanks for your super chat. They said, congrats, Nathan. Someone spelled science correctly for you. Now learn what it is. Alan H, thanks for your super chat. They said, Nathan, if planes don't run on fuel, why do they burn on crashes? Uh, well, anything will burn. That doesn't mean it's made of fuel. And also, if you look up crashes, it's not exploding like you would think it would. It's not giant gasoline explosions. And they just simply don't have the volume or the structural integrity to hold 100,000 pounds of gasoline in each wing. Also, refueling times are 10 to 15 minutes. The two Lots of claims. Another interruption. Thank you so much, Craig. I was waiting for that. Um, cool. Uh, well, wow. can you actually count this side? This is impressive. Okay. Okay. Next up, Mouth Breather. Thanks for your super chat. They said a Carno engine does not relate to planes or cars. Please don't avoid the question. Please explain what a Carno engine is or admit you don't understand the law of entropy. I don't know what a Carno engine is. I know what entropy is. Next. Sleet, thanks for your super chat. They said, you don't know what the law I of entropy own a is, jet engine. Please tell me why I have to keep putting fuel into it when I run it. <laughs> yeah okay uh, i've seen videos of people cutting the fuel line to jet engines and they still run so these people are funny dude it's like they're so ignorant and so scientifically illiterate they just talk cool. out of their rear end cool gotcha. um Thanks you know I, I i worked with like 
air technicians in the Royal Navy and like, wow, they must have all been in on the conspiracy. Are you from the Valley? I've like worked with like air people Mm -hmm. and like, they like said, we like we should go out for cosmopolitans and like- Yeah, you know, because engineering is a thing and it all disagrees with what you say. Up, Craig, you sound like because a Because everything you say you is wrong. It's the match. Seven, Steve, seven. Good job you're a window licker. Says, yeah. does Nathan believe in A, in Q, uh, and in Q, A, non? I'm just going to stop you there, James. I don't have beliefs. I'm here to yes, talk you do. about it observable no no you have beliefs science, so everything you say is a belief next up another interruption thank mr. you so much really yeah cool keep next counting up, mr. i'm unite, trying mr unite for the children says, i want to go for a record let's see sorry james hey james if i'm gonna sit here and answer questions for you bro i would i would ask you to ask him not to interrupt me every time oh shut up you little pussy extremely old and irritating okay yep but yep is, so is you it talking, is, about, true, so talking about sponge it is true it is true like to be fair most of these super chats are aimed at uh nathan so to be fair if you want a fair debate if you want to win fair and square then we you know, oh uh, james there, there, there is no much. debate we all know this uh, um Globe i can't let, I can't let him just you here, dumbass. to parade your stupidity to Come the world on. Globe and I've done a perfect samurai. job of it. Globe, Globe Samurai, thanks for your uh, super chat. Nathan, are you proud of yourself? Yeah, for sure. As long as my parents think what I'm doing is cool and I think God's happy with me, I'm fine with that. Gotcha. Next up, JL Warren, thanks for your super chat. They said, when will you admit that you were exposed as a Poe in Dallas? I was never exposed as a Poe in Dallas. I have no idea what you're talking about. Next up. Ot Kaji, thanks for your super chat. They said, Nathan, are you doing a runner? Are you moving to avoid law enforcement? Ha <laughs> ha! I got a disorderly conduct charge. These guys are acting like I'm wanted for murder and I come <laughs> on live debates on YouTube. Oh my God. <laughs> you guys are retarded. Right, JR. You're gonna in, right. Just make sure you JR. stream your uh, court yeah. date, will you? Absolute you your morons, dude. JR. The globe Thank has you for... infected your brain Next and now up. you're like, uh, Nathan, 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 Nathan you sound brain. like you had a brain injury. Nathan, Nathan has brain. Nathan, Nathan, Nathan you Nathan sound like you brain. have an actual right. brain injury. I got it. I got it. I got it. Jr. <laughs> thanks for your super chat. They said, <laughs> dude. "You sound no, like you stop. are actually retarded." Seriously, Jr. Thanks for your super chat. They said, "Fight the flat Earth." Explain a cell in million lunar eclipse at day. Explain the Snelly and Lunar Eclipse at day. The heliocentric model explains it. Like, what do they want to know? You, the, uh, there is points where the um, angle of the Moon and the Earth are incident when it's when it's daylight. It's simple on the heliocentric model. The Earth, ro- the Moon rotates around the Earth once every month, and at certain points, the ecliptic plane matches up in certain in a such a way that you can have that lunar eclipse in the day. It's part of our heliocentric model, and it's explained perfectly by orbital mechanics. Gotcha. Thanks for that. Next up, appreciate your super chat from OLM. They say, show us your map. Don't be afraid. Yeah, I'm happy you asked. I was waiting for that. The sky is a map and a clock. It's been the same forever. No, it hasn't. It changed. USGS uses um, flat earth maps uh, to calculate distances outward from the North Pole. And also, Craig, Craig, shut up. We've got to, if, it's, if it's going to be fair, Craig, childish, you, immature, crybaby loser. Come on, James. Nathan, I can't let him just say Nathan, wrong come stuff on, James. all I, the time. I just can't. I can't be, be fair, Nathan. Yeah. Just, I got Look at you. You're if such a loser, bro. You're going to be uh, fair. What's that? Eight shower heads. Yourself. Okay. You can't even relax. control yourself. Nathan. Yeah. I mean, no, everything you say, Nathan, is wrong. Everything you say is wrong. Nathan. Everything, Craig. everything Craig. you say Craig. is wrong. Zombie Craig. frothing at the mouth. Nathan, Nathan. Be quiet. Nathan, Poor everything baby. you say is wrong. Everything Poor you say baby. is wrong. Craig, we know you're, you're so triggered. You're the one who's so triggered. Look at you. Hey, we know you disagree with me. That doesn't give you the right. Oh, no, 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 you like lost any rights me. when you started harassing that children. You don't you get respect, you piece asshole. of shit. All right. You don't get respect, you piece of crap. We have, to, we have to get back. How anyway, triggered are you, Nathan? How, How triggered are you? get to the actual right? debate. So yeah. if there's going to be like a fair debate, like Craig, it is true that you have repetitively like 
Darth Dawkins level cut off Nathan Thompson. So we yeah, yeah. Do uh, have James, it's all he deserves. So, um, but to... the, the debate's over, isn't it? We've done the debate. This is just the, the super yeah. chats where oh, he yeah. gets to act be more stupid. Alum. Thanks you... for your super chat. O Alum says, "Show us people your are, map." James, Don't... people are so triggered. So Next up, triggered. O Alum. So... Thank you for your it's super so chat. Disconnected <laughs> from reality, guys. So triggered, Nathan. Oh, Nathan. look at you. Disconnected from reality. Guys, Nathan. please take screenshots they, and make they memes. Don't Send the memes to my Discord. When someone else is talking, you should <laughs> let them finish. Otherwise, yeah, you're interrupting um, them. And Craig has done it over 20 times during this. Oh, we yeah, I have. Moving. And insulted me uh -huh. four times. <laughs> I have, you're right. And you oh, deserve nothing excellent. less. Just know, guys, if you subscribe to the anti-flat earth cartoon <laughs> globe-loving cult, you, gotta keep you have nothing to bring <laughs> Oh, my God. Does his mouth never stop moving? It's hilarious. Except <laughs> insults and interruptions. So, this, this is what you hey, guys mate, have to look forward to. You might need to mute him because he be seems to be uh, going on, on a rant now. Are you going to tucker yourself this out there, little boy? This is what you have to look forward to. You can be just like Craig, who is a little childish, giggling schoolgirl. Oh, my goodness. His I've never met such a triggered little snowflake in oh, all my well, life. You're triggered. You're the one. You're projecting, Craig. <laughs> oh, look at you. Are you going to start crying, Nathan? That's Are you going to start crying next? Shut up. The Are you going to start crying next? Are you? Or Craig is so going to start crying. Look, more pictures you? of me on Craig's computer <laughs> oh, because the baby. Craig loves me. He's look at the little baby. Nathan Thompson. Okay, so now I can see the tears in your pictures. eyes, Nathan. I can see the tears. pictures of Nathan Thompson because he loves me. Thanks, okay. Craig. I can see the tears. And support from NASA fanboys. <laughs> okay. Oh. okay. That's beautiful. Sorry, James. Thank I seem you. to have broken Nathan. I do apologize. We are going to I go to the you. next. I broke you, clown. I broke you two hours ago. <laughs> Look you at you, triggered little me, snowflake. Calling me names, loser. Oh, oh my no, goodness. We've We're broken the whole going. time. <laughs> <laughs> James, this, is, this is pure gold. You realize this is gold, We've right? We've got to go. We've got to keep going, you guys. Okay. Oh, Alan, thanks for your super chat. said, show us your map. Don't be afraid. Sky's a map and a clock. Next question. <laughs> Brian Brokaw, thanks for your super chat. Who said, Nathan, I can see other planets with my telescope from a high elevation. Why can't I see New York from Texas? When he says other planet, he assumes that the Earth is a planet. Earth is not a planet. Planet means wandering star, and you can't see as far horizontally as you can see vertically because of the laws of perspective. The ground is rising to eye level. Now, when you look Ding. up, there are no lines of convergence from the ground rising to eye level. Because you're looking up. Gotcha. Ha! Thank Ding. you. Next up, Jack of Trades. Thanks for your super chat. Said, Nathan, I find your sincerity hard to deny. Maybe physics isn't for you and you should try telling people about how great God is or something instead and focus on that, huh? I do that too. Philip, thanks for your super chat. They said, what would, you, what would it take for each of you to be convinced of the other person's position? Evidence. So I said that before, but there isn't any flat earth evidence. What All there you, is Nathan? is flat earthers not understanding science. Nathan? Yeah, it's observation, then hypothesis, then experiment. So I don't want to Next up. Another Next. interruption from Craig. Thank you so much. Right, that was a parrot. Craig, Sorry. Craig, come on. Text, text drink water. Thanks for your super chat. They said Nathan's brain is about as big as his SpongeBob toy. Girl, that's another insult. James, can we just do the science questions, bro? I thought we were in a rush. Gotcha. <laughs> let, me, let me try to sift through here. Rock I mean, I love insults from Craig, bro. I don't need to hear them from you two. Rock three. Well, what are your thoughts on there only being a handful at most around five church fathers that believed the earth was flat? Most believed a globe, Nathan. Nathan, they all believe, and I believe it's a globe. I believe it's flat. Bleep, 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 bleep. Thank you, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. David Shipley, thanks for your super chat. They said, Nathan, how do globe earthers believe gravity works? Wait for answer. Um, fight the flat earth. How does science actually explain gravity? Um, uh, how does science explain gravity? So gravity is the phenomenon of mass attracting mass, which is caused by an emergent force, which is a consequence of the curvature of space-time due to the uneven distribution of mass. There is plenty of experiments that actually are experimental evidence of special and general relativity. So it's 
quite well understood what the effects of gravity are. If mass attracted mass, I would be more attracted to fat chicks, but I'm not because it doesn't happen. Next up, thank you for that. Uh, more dumb stuff. Wow. Next up, um, Keith Milner. Thank you, Super Chat. They said, "Where is the viewer height in the eight inch per mile approximation formula that flurfers use? Why don't they use the accurate formula? It's not difficult." No, I'm so easy. happy he brought that up because that is the formula at sea level or at the surface of the globe. Now, if you incorporate height, for example, the black swan from one foot up shows a horizon well beyond 10 miles in the distance, and the horizon should be at two to three miles. So sorry that the Earth's not a globe and the horizon does not bend downward because of convexity over large bodies of water, but it's flat and stationary, and that's a fact, cheers. Gotcha. There wasn't a single fact in what you just said. Refraction doesn't work the way you think it does. On the screen now is the difference between eight inches per mile squared and the actual curvature. Great. You say my group's an echo chamber, and you say the exact same thing after every single time I say something. You say, that's all wrong. You didn't say anything that is true there. None you of that didn't. is fact. That's because blah, blah, blah. everything you say yeah, is wrong. Nathan, Nathan, everything with, you say like, is um, wrong. Next up. Every Next single up. word that <laughs> comes out of your mouth <laughs> is factually Next incorrect. Yeah. Every Ranger single Man, thing. 9404. Thanks for your super chat. They said, Nathan, don't quit your day job for a singing career. I don't Ot have Kajai. a day job. My job no, is we know you don't have a job. Earth, so. Appreciate Thank it. Ot Kajai, thanks for your that. super chat. They said, Craig. I got the answers, ladies and gentlemen. I got the answers. No, you don't. You don't have single heads. evidence. You don't have Ot single Ot bit. Kajai. Ot Kajai, thanks for your super chat. They said, Craig, Nathan was my D-F-O-T-Y vote. Go to work now. Willie Murray. Oh, no, yeah, no, uh, Nathan chat. is actually no, uh, my official nomination. Team. We're not going to double yeah, team. So you said I never won anything in my life, Craig. You were wrong. No. Thank <laughs> you very much. Willie Murray. You didn't win Dumb again. Fuck of the Year. Willie Murray. Ethan Warrior won it last year. You're in with a chance this year. You're Craig probably going to win Dumb Fuck of the, the Year this year, Willie definitely. Murray. You rewind Thanks the debate. You won. Craig said I never win anything, but now yeah. I won something. So we are, you, Nathan, Willie you Murk, haven't won we, okay, anything. We definitely, you got a nomination. Have to move on. Willie Merck, thanks for your super chat. They said, Nate, the power supply and transmitter on a U2 would have to be massive, man. Let's debate. The plane is too small to have that much avionics loaded. James, do you hear what they're saying? You can't sing the signal from a plane. It has to be coming from cartoon space 250 miles away from the Earth's surface. It can't be 90,000 feet. It has to be 250 miles away in space. Next up, Dennis D, thanks for your super chat. They said wow. Nathan's dog took a big crap inside his head. Area 85 restorations. I'm sorry, Nathan. Come on. Please, Nathan. It's just. I'm, I'm not a patron anymore, James. We're not friends. <laughs> Nathan, Dennis D says, um, Area 85 Restorations, thanks for your super chat. They said, if Nathan is the big expert on jet engines, can he explain the basic principle of how one works? Yeah, of course. The jet engine creates a vacuum in front of it, and the vortex is self-perpetuating. Thank you. Next what up. What the fuck did you just say? Next up. <laughs> next up. Show your sources. Thanks for your super chat. They said, Nathan, they have chased people over little things like parking tickets. Gotcha. Traveler X, thanks for your super chat. They said, Craig, how far will Polaris have progressed by the time Natalie is released from the room he's in right now? Very, very little. Um, you know, fairly perceptible. But the procession's there. That's why in 13,000 years' time, we'll have a different North Star. Next up, Stephen1758. Thanks for your super chat. They said, okay, try it this way. Is Nathan a member of Q? Definitely not. Red Cosmos Devil, thanks for your super chat. They said, Natalie, you have a very punchable face. <laughs> Wardrobe. <laughs> um, war coded, war coded zero one, thanks for your super chat. They said, Nathan, do you know the difference between a sharp and shallow turn when you drive a car? Nathan? You can't be serious, James. Gotcha. Dave Gar. No, he doesn't, is the answer. Thanks for your super chat, Dave Gar. For both, would observations of the Martian polar ice caps be proof of a large body of water adhering in a curve to a sphere? No. Like, you need to measure curvature of Earth, not the fact that ice caps exist. I mean, you could have walls of ice 
on a flat earth or a tilted cartoon spinning spongebob globe you you want to see curvature of earth because i've got measurements how high was that dog cam have you figured that out yet that was about one hundred and ten thousand feet excellent well neil degrasse tyson says earth's flat from 100 cool i'm not neil degrasse tyson am I? another I'm interruption start. craig thank Next you so time. much so wait james I mean, not, you, you bring up other people i'm up. gonna say i'm not neil degrasse right. tyson Next next okay. up next up thanks for your super chat from michael barrett who says james are you questioning your life choices <laughs> it's been a funny one tonight that's for sure red cosmos devil thanks for your super chat they said natalie can you explain Foucault's pendulum yeah of course earth ro doesn't rotate under anything look at anything hanging in nature and it's oh not swinging and there's not a drift involved so a lot of times i go to museums and the cult's not working they have to be started that's not an observation. That's a man-made apparatus. And if you think a man-made apparatus is science, well, you probably think you live it in a science. doesn't think man-made apparatus is science. Fuck Next me. Up. Next up. Thanks so much for being here, everybody. It's been a wild one. It's been crazy tonight. We appreciate you spending your time with us. I've heard the word on the streets is that there is a after party over uh, an after show over at team skeptics channel nathan's twin brother that should be a lot of fun <laughs> oh i love you guys so uh want to let you know that's going on if they send me the link i will put it in the description and if there's any other if the other uh, my guess is that's going to be a primarily globe person um demographic at that after show if any flat earthers want to host an after show let me know thanks so much for being here folks it is honestly so fun you can tell that i'm honestly like on the verge of death i've never been so tired in my life <laughs> so want to say reminder that both of our speakers i've put both of their links in the description so that you at your convenience if you're listening today and you're like mm, boy do i want to get more of that well you can their links are chilling out in the description as i left them there just for you and want to say oh Wotan returns next Friday. He will be debating Planner Walk. That should be a lot of fun. Why Where would you do that to Planner Walk? We're That's just me. <laughs> we're going to have a lot of fun ones coming up, folks, including we actually have Nathan's twin brother, The Plain Truth, will be coming back on tomorrow against Pleasant Connor. So that should be a lot of fun. That's going to be a wild one. We should hopefully have an intelligent design debate this Sunday. A lot more stuff coming up. And so whether you be Christian atheist, Flat Earth, Globe Earth, Republican, Democrat, you name it. We hope you feel welcome here. And so thanks for hanging out with us. And gentlemen, I can't thank you enough. You guys, it's been quite the show tonight. Thank you very much, Nathan and Craig. What's about the closing me. thoughts from Craig and me real quick? Who wants to go first? Go ahead, Nathan. Craig. No, I went first with the evidence. All you right. go first with closing I'll thoughts. Yeah, the most dangerous man to any government is the man who is able to think for himself without regard to prevailing superstitions and taboos. So if you know that the earth is flat, you are deadly dangerous because you're the type of person who's broken free from this conditioning and you don't buy everything hook, line, and sinker that the government tells you through their fake news media outlets or public indoctrination camps. The truth's incontrovertible. Malice will attack it over and over and over again and continue to interrupt and insult it. But uh, ignorance will try to deride it. In the end, there it is. So thank you very much for having me, James. Guys, subscribe to the show. I'm personally a Patreon of Modern Day Debate. I really love the channel. I, I like how, you know, kind of laissez-faire you are with the debates. It's not too strict and regimented. Um, so thanks so much for having me. It's been fun. Craig, I appreciate you. Uh, the tally was insulting me. Uh, 24 times, and you interrupted me 25 times. Well, here you go. You're a fucking idiot. I have two more. Now you're now you're break even with the insults and interruptions. So you got. Oh damn! I wanted to go for more. Wait, you're, you're definitely a moron. There, you uh, have an IQ of a rock, and you and look you like a moron. How's that? Excellent. Well, let me wrap it up real quick, Craig. So it's pretty sad when you come to a debate and your goal is there to was insult. No debate. You've got a, your goal, got a, your goal a, is to insult and and interrupt people. This is called. Are you going to stop day, talking at any time? That's called modern day debate, Craig. So if you didn't, yeah, think are you going to stop talking? Debate, or? 
This, if you didn't think this was a debate, Craig, this just shows there is no long, debate. There is no debate. But are you going to shut up at any point, or you think you live on a spinning ball and you join a think. channel called Modern? Are you, you going to stop talking, or you're just say, going to keep going? This isn't a debate. Uh, the channel's called Modern Day Debate, Craig. So this yeah, was most there, there is no debate. We're going to ask a couple talking? of we're going to ask a couple of quick super chats that came in awesome. last second before we go over to Craig's closing. So quick. Can you, Josh Griffin, thanks for your super chat. They said, can you both debaters give their definition of an echo chamber? Yeah. Um, somewhere that, uh, well, let's talk about Nathan's group, for instance. The reason I got booted from Nathan's group was for asking questions about gravity. That is an echo chamber. Gotcha, Nathan. Yeah, well, we don't boot people for asking questions. We boot people uh, I've, for I've got screenshots insults. to prove it. Insults, okay. Um, uh, breaking the rules could be a lie or not providing scientific evidence for your claims, like gravity is mass attracting mass, blah, blah, ah, blah. Right, so anything you don't think is science, got it, echo chamber. Large objects don't appear to have a magnetic-like attraction, Craig, so you- Gravity isn't magnetic, you moron. SpongeBob, I know I said a magnetic-like attraction. It's nothing like magnetic. You next up, we've gotta to go to the next question. Mass. So okay, Nathan, we, like need, we need an answer from you on what an echo chamber is. Yeah, it's uh, when you let SpongeBob ask the same questions over and over again. Willie Merck, thanks for your super chat. They said, Nate, I am not claiming satellites. Use the A-W-A-C-S. All right, I'm not claiming satellites either. I think they're fake. Cool, we're on the same page. Next. Workorder01, thanks for your super chat. They said, you're not Neo, Nathan. I never thought it was. I'm Nathan, not, not Neo. Yeah. Next up, we'll let, uh, Nate. We'll let uh, Craig have his closing statement. <clears throat> and then we'll wrap up. Cool. Yeah, there, there is no debate about the flat Earth at all. There is no evidence that the Earth is flat. There simply is the objective fact that the Earth is a globe and it rotates. All evidence shows that to be the fact. There is no debate. The reason I came here is simply to parade Nathan's stupidity to the world, to a large audience. And James nicely let me do that. So um, whenever Nathan attempts to flat smack anyone from now on, I will just refer them to this debate where he said some monumentally moronic things. The earth isn't flat. All flat earthers are fucking idiots. Fight the flat earth. Gotcha. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Want to say thanks, folks, for hanging out with us. It's always a blast. We really appreciate it. Want to say it's always a pleasure. I honestly am just such in a great mood. I love being here. And so you guys make it fun. Want to say thanks so much for all the love and encouragement. It means a lot. And so even if you're a critic, I want to let you know, sometimes I ignore you. Sometimes I even tell you that you're, you're wrong and to shut up. <laughs> but I want to let you know, we do appreciate you being here. It's good for us to get that feedback. That's why I may tell you I, once in a while, I get a little snippy and I say, shut up. But we've never, uh, we will never block somebody or, or delete them or something if you're, if you're a critic of modern day debate. So let me know if anybody does that, like, let me know because the moderator shouldn't do that. And I don't think they ever have. So I want to say thanks so much for being here, folks. We hope you have a great rest of your night. Keep sifting out the reasonable from the unreasonable.